You're, there be because y'all are live. Yeah, can't go back now. <laughs> All right, everybody, welcome to this Thursday night's edition of the Live Well here at Fish North Georgia. We're so glad you guys are joining us tonight. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Click that notification bell. And if you're watching at a later date, hey, we love you as well. Make sure you check out Fish North Georgia on all our social media platforms. That's the TikTok, Instagram, a couple of Facebook groups. We own anything. We're on Twitter now, too. Got a Twitter account, all that going on. So i uh, got a great episode in store for you guys tonight. We're going to tell you a little bit about Mr. John Hare. I pronounced it right, didn't I? Yes, sir. I can't really mess that one up. Of Greenfish Tackle, we're going to be talking with him. But first... Let's knock out all our sponsors. So what do we got going on first tonight there, Mr. Tim? Sonar Sonar pros. pros. Hey, guys, listen. You know how important Sonar game is today? And if you're going to spend the money, you might as well take it to the absolute best to get it rigged up. And that's Trent and the guys over there at Sonar Pros. Give them a call, 770-530-4505. By appointment only. By appointment only. But absolutely the best. You take it anywhere else, you're going to end up taking it him to fix it. So got that right there. Next, if you want to catch some Megalodons on Lake Lanier, there's only one guy you need to call. That's Kevin Underwood with Lipstick or Fish, and we see it every single day on the Fish North Georgia group page. He always puts his clients on the biggest, best fish, especially the most spotted bass on Lake Lanier. You can check him out on Facebook and get in touch with him at lipstickerfishing.com. And then we've got Evolve Rod Sleeves, absolutely the best rod sleeve I've ever used. I tell you about it every week. They've got the protective end for your tip. They float. they got the lanyard that holds it in place. And best of all, the hooks do not stick in it. You can check them out at Evolve fishing.com what's next here we go we all oh, we got our buddies over there at festive waters nathan and the guys uh, if you're in the kayak or the paddleboard game hey you definitely want to check them out they do rentals they can rig you up a full-blown bass fishing kayak off highway 369 right here check them out at www.festivewaters.com and we've got a new sponsor tonight we want to introduce the money saver lure retriever guys this is a plug knocker that we call them around here of all the plug knockers right there. So they got this little thing on top where you can slide your line in, shoot these things down. Hey, they come in six colors. So if you got a woman that wants a pink one, hey, we got the pink ones for you. You can find them right here at Fish North Georgia. We're redoing our website. That'll be, I guess it'll be up and running full blown by next week. We'll have them right there. Or you can come in the shop. We got all six colors right there. Definitely, you know, all the money we spent on crankbaits and everything, you want one of these in your boat. So definitely check out Money Saver Lure Retriever. Now, of course, we got our buddies at Turner Tire, 706-253-3339 right here in Jasper, Georgia. Hey, local family-run business. If you need tires, anything like that, Brock and the guys up there will set you up. And, again, Brock's a fisherman like us, so always support local. And that's Turner Tire, 706-253-3339. And, of course, as always, Etowah Mead, Beer, and Wine. Tonight I am taking – the RBMB, which is your favorite, one of them. You drank the last one? I did, but I offered it to you before the show. Well, I was drinking another beer before then. Well, I'm sorry. I offered it. You know, you, hey, you can't. I know where I rank. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> mead. Guys, if you're in the mead, they can ship this stuff to you. We're going to be getting together with the guys up there to have a Fish North Georgia night very, very soon. And we'll, we'll work on that. I think we're going to get a little bit warmer so that we bring a big crowd, we have enough room outside. But again, Etowah Mead, Beer and Wine, Dahlonega, Georgia, check them out. Thursday night trivia, them college kids get up there. If that's your game, a lot of fun right there. So real quick before we get going, we'll look in the comments section. Robert Woody, Jeremiah, uh, I just need to make them jigs with the wire trailer keepers, and I'll be good. Hey, listen, we're going to talk about that tonight. And then uh, Frank Arnold from North Carolina, not quite a Yankee, but hey, we appreciate you joining us tonight. And again, Alan McCullough, Elizabeth Shoe. Do we know Elizabeth Shoe? I don't know what that means, but anyway, maybe he's tagging somebody. But guys, listen, as we get into this conversation with John, we're going to talk about greenfish tackle, how it evolved and what it is today. And we're going to talk about the fishing industry as a whole. And of course, he's got a group of kids up here behind me, young men from Clark's Hill Fishing Team. All right. So we, we've got those guys back there. They're going to be fishing late Lanier. Uh, did you guys say it was a Georgia Bass? Yeah. Georgia Bass High School. Going to have all them high schoolers coming down out of Laurel Park. So you guys, if you're on the water, be careful. Watch out for those. Doug Phillips, how you doing? Alan, oh, the hot girl from the original Karate Kid. You remember that movie? I remember the movie. I don't remember a hot girl. Oh, she's hot. Was she? Yeah. Well, I was like 13 back then, so she was pretty good looking to me at, back in the I day. So. 25. Oh, yeah. That's Big Al. I always forget Big Al. Last week it was Pam Anderson. 
So there you go. I remember Pam Anderson. You, Alan, you need to change your name to Big Al. So you know, nowhere near Yankee Land. I got you. I got you. I know he's at now. Too many people in the comment sections. Appreciate you joining us tonight. Yeah, you should change your name to Big Al. So anyway, anyway, John, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. You ain't nervous, are you? No, we, I'm not nervous. We ain't scared you off yet. No, not yet. So you guys hail from around Augusta. We're right outside of Augusta in a little town called Grove Town. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a little, little suburb of Augusta, about 10, 15 miles. Um, my shop is right there in the heart of Grove Town, right off I-20. Right. Um, been in Augusta my whole life. We call you guys Flatlanders. Flat. Yeah, yeah. You are We call you guys hillbillies. We are hillbillies. <laughs> I like it, so we're doing that. So, uh, Cam, hey, glad you made it home. I appreciate you coming up here to the shop today. And uh, – it was nice meeting you again. Stay strong, brother, right there. So um, let's kind of, as as the night progresses and, and people start joining in, before we get started into talking about actual products and, and the industry and everything, give me a little rundown of Greenfish Tackle, how it came to be. I know a lot of people know the name, but just what? how did it start and how did it get to where you are today? Um, so... I've been in the industry for with another company. I was I was with them. So I actually graduated from college with a degree in history and a minor in secondary education. And uh, I graduated in December. Wasn't going to get a job as a teacher until the next August. Right. So I had a little bit of time. I've always fished. You know, I tournament fished. Well, my a uh, friend and tournament partner at the time was working for another company. And he said, Hey, we need a part timer to come in and, um, and help us work. Well, that turned into, uh, that little six month span turned into a year and then another year. And, and then I just got all into it, you right. know, and then it got to be later on, uh, where I was there and I was growing up and having kids and trying to start a family and this, that, and the other. And I was like, if I'm going to, make something i gotta kind of go out on my own and do it on my do it myself and right. so i actually started with a tackle shop and we built baits in the back of the tackle shop but i knew i had the name greenfish tackle um we were actually i was trying to come up with a tagline for it and, and my tournament partner uh his name's chris rodwell and um he we were actually idling under little river bridge fishing a tournament and i was like Greenfish tackle, greenfish tackle. I was like, oh, greenfish tackle, the chase is over. Cause it's like, the, how I got the name greenfish was I was watching an FLW weigh in one day and some, I don't know who the angler was, but he came up and the announcer was like, what you been doing? He's like, oh, nothing. I've just been chasing these little green fish around the country. Mm -hmm. So when I, I thought about it and I was like, greenfish tackle, the chase is over. That's our, that's our tagline. Then we went with it, you know, and, um, I had some buddies that, that were casters and just, I mean, the rest is history. The rest is history. So, uh, you know, Drew Higgins? Drew, yes, I know Drew, Drew Higgins. Drew Higgins says, that's my boy John right there. So, <laughs> I do appreciate know. you, Drew, watching tonight. And uh, the next comment down, uh, got actually got the first question of the night for okay. you. Okay. From Andy Anderson. DJ Haddon said he became the number one angler on Clark's Hill by fishing with green fish tackle. Is that true? Uh, and, listen, and listen, if you got to blow blow your own horn, blow it. <laughs> yeah. No, I would say I'm far from the number one angler. I'm the number one has been on the lake. I'm I'm, I'm exactly sure of that. Um, but uh, no, I, I just go out and have a lot of fun. When when the grass when the lake had grass in it, we we used to catch them pretty good. But now it's a complete. We got spots. I don't know how to chase them little fish around way out there deep that's a young man's game it is <laughs> it is absolutely walton doyle hello from oklahoma you must be going to the mr bass master classic right there so hey appreciate you walton as always and adam w fishing hello so you know up here in north georgia we always always seems like we talk about lake lanier or alatoona or any of these other highland reservoirs we don't talk about clark's hill a lot so for those watching Give us a little rundown about Clark's Hill. What kind of lake it is? Uh, Clark's Hill is is a reservoir much like Hartwell. Um, you know, a lot of clay banks. Uh, used to have hydrilla. Uh, they put about six years ago, they put carp in it, and it took them about six months to eat every morsel of hydrilla in the lake that quick oh yeah and then then and, and the, before the hydrilla got out, the spots were kind of 
coming over. I, I remember talking to a, a another angler probably six or seven years ago. I said, and we you catch a spot and you'd be like, oh my gosh, I caught a spot. That's that's random, you know. Right. And we were talking after a tournament one day, and I said, give this about six, seven, eight years. We're going to start in the morning. We're going to say, you're going to stay down the lake and fish for spots, or are you going up the river and fish for largemouth? And yeah. sure that's, that's what it's turned into. What kind of bait fish do you have in Clarksville? What's the predominant? Blueback heron. You got it's, the heron. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that's we don't have – and I don't know why. I don't know if it's because we have a pump or a, a pump back and a, and a pump out system. And oh, they, you do. They suck a bunch of heron out when it – but we just don't – the bait doesn't get as big as like Lanier and uh, Hartwell. Okay. It, you know, it just, I don't know why, but we just don't have the amount. Maybe we have more stripers, or but I don't, it'd be hard to believe we have more stripers than Lanier does. But we've got a few. We <laughs> talked about that Tuesday night. You ever fished it, Kevin? Clark's Hill? Yes, I have. HD Marine tournaments used to go out of Clark's Hill. Yep. Mm -hmm. Can you echo like what he's saying? Did you see the I changes? No, it's been years since I fished it, but I don't remember ever seeing any hydrilla. But we stayed down and chased them little green fish, the little spots. We didn't go up the river. Well, if, if you if you were catching spots, you were on the tail end of the hydrilla. Yeah. Um, you know, the spots didn't get real prolific until kind of the 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 hydrilla era. That was, so it was probably what is it, twenty four now? So it was probably four. No, when does the elite? He's, he's I remember Davy. That's where I, I, I remember Davy Height weighing in a spot in the first uh, that elite that he won. He weighed in a spot that he caught down on the main point by Wildwood boat ramp, and everybody was like, "Oh my gosh, he caught a spotted bass! Where, where is that? You know, where yeah. is that coming from? I don't know if they got in there through Russell, through pumping them through Russell, or if somebody let them in there, but." You know, they're now starting to grow a little bit and yeah. to where, you know, it's it's you you can't win with all spots on Clark Hill. If you do, it's it's rare. Maybe in the wintertime, um a couple of them scopers go down there and they can catch uh okay. scopers. Yeah, a couple of them scopers to win when we were down there every year. Yeah. Eighteen to twenty. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's gonna take eighteen to twenty pounds most most weekends. Um, but you're gonna have to have a mixed bag. Have a mixed bag. Uh, so Jeremiah, yes, we are going to talk about some green fish products. Uh, we're pacing ourselves. We're pacing ourselves, but we're definitely, he's a tackle junkie. And I'm telling you, if anybody watching tonight's going to buy something, it'll be <laughs> Jeremiah. Like, I, I wish I had his checkbook. I don't know where I'm he gets his money. You, I'm serious. That kid's probably got about $30,000 in just swim baits. Oh, Lord. Uh, Robert Woody, you're from Augusta. Have you ever heard of James Anderson? James Anderson. That might be a loaded question. I don't know. I think so. Robert, yeah. why don't you give us a little more info on J who James Anderson is for us, if you don't mind doing that. Derek Morris Fishing, good seeing you tonight. Clarks Hill is a great lake for numbers, pretty good fish too. So around here we got Alat – this is what we say, Lanier for size, Alatuna for numbers. So how would you rank Clark Hill? Because we think Lanier is – now we think. A lot of us think that Lanier is the premier spotted bass lake Oh, probably in the nation. I know some of them 100%. California boys will fuss, but they're from California. We won't hold that against them. But Alatuna now has the blue backs and the LYs, and so the spots are starting to grow. But it, but it's mostly known for numbers. Uh, that's going to change. Clark's Hill, how would you compare that to what Derek says right there? What did Derek say? He said, he said it's great. Uh, Clark's Hill is great for numbers, but it's got pretty good fish in it too. Oh yeah, there's. I mean, we just had the big bass last weekend, an eight eighty four one. There was two eight pounders caught. I mean, it took a four pounder pretty much the Friday of of the uh, the first day. Um, I fished and caught a five seven two in the first hour, and one with a five seven two, and then fished around and found some fish and caught probably on one little spot caught probably 10 or so and rode around with three, three and a half pounders just thinking, Oh man, you know, maybe I can go get a last place check or whatever, you know, but it took pretty much a four pounder to get a top 10 check every hour, okay. all, all three days. How big, so, how big is the lake? 72,000. So, so it's twice the size of Lanier. It's, it's the biggest man-made lake east of the Mississippi river. Really? Mm -hmm. So there you go. I did not know that. Um, 
let's say we're going to Clark's Hill tomorrow and you want to target largemouth. I want to target spots. Tell us a little bit about how you would go about targeting the largemouth and then tell me how you would tell me to target the spots. If I was going to target largemouth, I would go up one of the rivers. We have two little rivers on Clark Hill. We have one in South Carolina. We have one in the Georgia arm. Um, if I was going to strictly go largemouth fishing, I would go, well, right now I would probably mix in looking for them on the bed yeah, because yeah. I mean, it, they're, they're, they're on the bed and you don't see a whole lot of spots on them. I don't know if I have all the bedding fish I've ever caught. I don't know if I've ever looked at a spot on the bed and caught it on Clark Hill. Right. Um, and they're generally a little bit deeper. Yeah. I think if they're out deeper, so I would mix in some bedding fish. Now we got the water is muddy right now. Um, the, the clearest water on the lake is actually where some of the dirtiest water is always been like up little river in the Gray's Creek area. Yeah. It's the clearest water. I don't know why. I don't know if they're, they're pulling, they're pulling the lake down because it's dropped like over a foot in the last week. But, um, so I don't know when, if they're, where they're drawing that water out, if it's pulling the mud down from, from the, the river arms or what, right. but. Okay, so that's how you go out to largemouth. I want to go out to spots. What you, am I going to do you there? Stay down the lake, by, down by the dam. Scoping? Uh, sco yeah, fishing rock, any kind of rock. I mean, you don't necessarily have to scope them right now, but right. shallow rock. Fishing rock and everything. All right, so um, Robert said that uh, Mr. James Anderson fished Clark Hill years back, years ago. So maybe it's just a name, a blast from the past. Doesn't sound familiar to me. Um I'm 44. Seriously, about you're be, young. About to be 45. You're still a baby. Yeah, I, I don't feel like, – mentally I feel like a baby, but well, physically I, mean, I feel I, like a 92-year-old man. Well, you're hanging out with young kids, though. That's got to help you a little bit. He, well, yeah. Well, or either – I'm or trying to get these Asian. kids to give me fishing information. They're going to teach me how to scope one day. You know what? <laughs> That's the thing. I've heard that from a lot of older anglers that are starting to hang out and fish – their partners are getting younger and younger because they know the scoping game and they want to learn it. And kids, that's just what they, they're good at it. They're good at it because I, I think the reason that they're, and I know that this is the thing that has dominated the fishing industries, the scoping stuff. And I've talked to a lot of people like old heads and, and number one, they, they don't know of fishing without scope. Right. So they don't have that point or that rock pile that they caught them on 10 years ago that they're sitting over there as they're scoping around and not seeing anything. They're not, they don't have anything in the back of their mind. Yeah. They're not saying, man, I could go run over there to that rock pile and hit that. And I might catch me one or two, you know, yeah. they're all, they're like, Oh, got to stay out here and scope. You know, yeah, so, yeah. uh, I mean, it's kind of their deal, you know, yeah. um, so they just commit to it, and I think that's a scoping deal. You either have to scope or fish. Fish. I don't All think right. you can mix the two together. So I'm going to go ahead and ask your opinion on it. You pro for it? Are you pro for it facing sonar, or are you against it? In a tournament situation. Let's keep it at a, in a tournament situation. In a tournament situation, I mean, I'm going to have to split the difference because I'm not against it, but I'm not like – go out there. That's all I'm going to do. Cause you have that knowledge in the back of your head. I know how to do it. Yeah. I'm, I can't see them as good as some of these guys fished with them. I've, I've, I've seen some of these kids. I, I fished with little Paul blew my mind. Yeah. How good he is. He's pretty good. I mean, like he would look and, and cast and never look up, you know, and I have to, I have to, I don't know if you can see, but I have to look at my thing and then I have to have a, one of them arrows on my trolling motor and yeah. I have to like line up you know? <laughs> yeah. and then I, I way under throw it or way over throw it. You know, 100%. he just, he just throws it out there and it's on the dot Yeah, like that. Yeah. I talked to Paul, uh, that's been a couple of weeks ago. He's going to come back on. He's been on the show before. Oh, okay. All of these young kids and I'm sure it's the same on Clark Hill, but Lake Lanier and this North Georgia area, that crop of kids that have come up, that are now 20 to 25. There are some absolute hammers. Hammers. Hammer. And and several of them are going to be fishing on the pro level. Oh yeah. They're 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 doing the opens and the and the BFLs, but they're working up. You know, you got your Will Harkins with the MPFL, you know, you got a Mill Wagner, Paul Jr., Paul Marks Jr. and all that. 
they will kick your ass, especially with that scope game. Oh, 100%. They, they are there. Great. Well, Paul comes like we have a, a, a tournament that we do. Um, uh, DJ, he, I see his name was on there. DJ Haddon runs a tournament. Um, <laughs> And I don't know if I should say this. Say it. I don't know if I can don't say this scared, on here, but I was talking to DJ one day and I was like, man, you know what we need to do? We need to have a tournament where it's all all the spots you can catch so we can get these things out of here. We need, yeah. to, we need to fill the cooler up with these spots. And I, I'm not like so, and super anti-spotted bass. I love catching spotted bass. Yeah. I mean, they're so much fun to fish for. I don't – at Clark Hill, you have a ton of eight – to 12 inch spotted bass yeah. that are just chunk stealers, you know? 100%. So I was like, we need to have a, like a, an all you, all you can catch tournament, you know, and do it just for fun. And, and we do, and little Paul comes down there. Don't ever even fish Clark Hill. And when I think he's won it the past two years. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, it's crazy. Like he catches like 50 something pounds of spots and yeah it, you can keep 20 fish in the tournament right but but it's a lot of fun oh so you got throw that tournament the 20 fish the 20 tournament. fish tournament paul driscoll talked to me about that yep yeah he's he's yep. done it before yep paul came down to to fish the 20 fish that tournament old i hope he's watching tonight yeah, like it's that. really just a uh just a fun little um like it started as a fun little get together thing, but you know, through Facebook and people, yeah. people hear about it and they're like, it's just something different, you know? But you know, and again, not to steer the show away from you. A lot of people have said that most of the kids today can only scope, but you have that group of kids like the Emils and the Pauls and, and, and um, Will Harkins and several others that have proven that they can go to these other lakes without it. So they're, they're good they're well, good where they, they catch fish in a mud. Look though. at the rookie class on the elites that's yes. getting so much heat. Now they are scopers and they can do it, but I think they're they're pretty good fishermen. Oh too. yeah. <laughs> I don't care what you say. You gotta be to a certain level, you've got to be good to get to that level. Oh yeah. Just like the worst baseball player in the major leagues is still better than ninety nine point nine 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 percent of the people in the entire world. So whether you scope to get to that level or whether you you know you're good at everything. You still are a good angler, one hundred percent. It does change the learning curve. It does a hundred percent. It does. it changes the learning curve, not just on um, learning to fish, but it changes the learning curve on your percentage. I mean, if you scope all day, you're going to look and you're probably going to make five hundred cast. Yeah, you're making five hundred cast at five hundred fish because you're not right. blind casting. Us old farts get out there. <laughs> we might make two thousand or twenty five hundred casts in a day. Yeah. At what we think might be holding the fish, where they should be. Where they? I, oh, I, I caught them here twenty years ago. That yeah. rock pile right up there. That's up there. right. The, the, you know, you got to the the math is if you throw five hundred times at five hundred fish, mm-hmm. you're going to get a lot more bites than throwing. 2,500 times yeah. at you're throwing a at potential at, 500 It's fish. high percentage when you see them. Right. I get it 100%. Uh, Frank Arnold, this is an interesting comment. Norman is knocking on Lanier's door. I guess he's, he's talking about Lake Norman being a, a spotted bass destination. So I've heard a lot about Norman. We need to do a show on it because I don't know that much about it. But if it's near as good as Lanier, it's got to be pretty good. Uh, let's see. Fluke Master Films on Clarks Hill. Robert Woody said that James Anderson fellow was a hammer back on Clark's Hill in the eighties, which if this is the same Robert Woody that I think it is, he's an old fart like we are. So hell, if he was in the, I was mm-hmm. born in 79. So I started fishing probably mid nineties, mid nineties. Okay. I got you. Ron Pendergrass says having the settings right is on, you know, on your forward face and then all your sonar is critical. And that's another thing, Ron, while you're on here, not, you know, just because you got it on your boat, Definitely doesn't mean you've got it set up to like optimum conditions. I know a lot of guys have it and they're figuring out how to tweak it and all that. That's why you need to book with Lipsticker Fishing and Kevin Underwood. He'll take you out and get them set up just right. Do you like that plug right there? I do. I worked that plug in right there pretty good. Does he do Garmin or Lawrence or what? He does it all. He don't care. Okay. He does. He's got now I know on his boat he's got the Garmin for the live, but he is a daggum expert on the hummingbirds with the side scan and everything. Went out with him. And I'm not good at side scanning. Kevin's going, that's a fish, that's a fish. And I'm like, what the hell are you looking at? And he's like, just trust me. And he 
Of course, you can't. Yeah, we got two kids that that are guiding out of um, DJ Haddon's store. He opened up a, a store right outside of Wildwood uh, called uh, Haddon Outdoors, and his son Tanner Haddon and um, Caleb Hudson are they're doing guided trips and and all these old guys you know they're all like take take me out and show me how to do yep. this and show me how to do that and da 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 yeah. and it's like. You can what's the old saying? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Yes, well, <laughs> we, we like to say that you can't fish another man's game. Sometimes yeah, yeah, something yeah, similar yeah. like that for sure. Absolutely. You know. Greenfish tackle has the best tackle out there. So that ought to make you feel pretty good. Somebody makes a comment like oh, that. KJ, thank, did. thank you very much. KJ. That's right. Y'all keep y'all keep blowing smoke up his butt. And it'll make you feel good. <laughs> out there. Uh, Charlie Adams, what's up, buddy? They are beast. Uh, let's see, KJ also said, Greenfish Bad Little Dude is my favorite jig with the, with the Yamamoto trailer. Best combo. So, again, another good good one. And then, Char let's see, Stephen Deverly, glad you could join us tonight. Charlie Adams says it shaves years off for learning, and he's talking about that learning curve. Oh, yeah. With that 100%. Uh, Dane Hunter, you got to watch this guy. He's a little crooked. Right? So he just sent me a he sent me a blank picture. Just showed me like a back cove of a lake today. Yeah, yeah. Little like, to no explanation. Just sent Dane, Dane's a little sketchy. <laughs> he's a good dude, but he's sketchy. So you got to watch him. He actually runs the ABA uh, North Division up here in North Georgia and all that. So he, he's, okay, he's a good dude. We we vetted him. Okay, like I said sketchy, but we vetted him. Uh, he he won't know. We bad little a shad in a three a three quarter ounce head with a one out hook. A one out hook. Good lord! I, I thought we were pushing the envelope with a half on. <laughs> yeah, but a three quarter would be a whole lot of lead and not a lot of hook. Um, oh, lord. it would just look real funny. It look real funny. I got it. But now he fishes out of tuna, so he's used to them little fish. Yeah, you know? no, I'm just kidding, Dane. Oh, Dane, I'm kidding. Oh, oh, Don't oh. be coming at me like that. Zach Lamb wanted to know how I got this clown on the show. Uh, That's got to be one of your buddies. Yeah, huh? Zach's my buddy. I, I fish with Zach a good bit. You want to know how we got him? Is his is now Roper works for you, right? Ro Roper, da Roper, and Davis work for Roper me. And Roper and Roper and Tucker works. And Tuck All three of them. All do. three of them work. So, so this young crowd back here, one of them hit me up on Facebook. He goes, "I got a great guest for your show." And I said, and, 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 and I don't think you thought I'd put you on or something. I think no, he, I didn't. Know. Roper on, said, I'm going to contact him and get you on that show. I was like, eh, I'm kind of a behind-the-scenes guy. You yeah, know? <laughs> but we got him. We got him right here, Fish North Georgia. Best fishing podcast in North Georgia. Uh, Ford, hey, actually, we're talking about talking about Roper right here. Ford Norton, pour, pull that up. That way that Roper can go back and screenshot this. Where is the USA's best youth angler, Roper Putton? <laughs> and that is from Ford Norton. So, right now he's he's in the crowd behind me, right there. So we got him. Should I get his? We can autograph? see a few of them over uh, yeah, Kevin's shoulder. See, they're there. out there. They're in the back, right there. But should I go ahead and get his autograph while he's here? That's the question. We we like to say Roper Putnam for president, twenty thirty two. Is he a Republican? He's a Republican. He got my vote, and All he's right. he's very well spoken. We may need to get him just sign a hat while he's here. Hey, I got plenty of them. We'll do that. There so, you go. Uh. Oh Lord, is this his mama, Elizabeth Putnam? Yeah, yeah. We actually this, have a, a color jig that he that he tied. We call it President's Crawl. President's Crawl. Well, Miss Putnam, listen. I, number one, I appreciate you allowing your boy out of the house to be up here tonight. And I promise you, we hillbillies up here in North Georgia, we will not corrupt him too badly. But I'm not going to promise you we won't corrupt him at all. She's not worried about that. She's on a, a beach in Aruba somewhere, sipping a mai tai, just you know. Is she really? Oh yeah. I want to know which president. Yeah, they got they got a private jet. jet. After. Which for? Oh, okay. So what? What the the presidential jig? What's it look like? And then we're gonna get back to Roper's mom. Um, what's the president? What what's President's crawl look like, Roper? I don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Brown and a green pumpkin. Oh, brown and green pumpkin. Real. Uh, it's a Richard Nixon one. Okay. I don't. Know. We'll, we'll, we'll that. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, brown, brown and green pumpkin. That's kind of a uh, <laughs> unique. Right. <laughs> okay, so Frank aren't unique. So Fra <laughs> Frank Arnold uh, said, contact Mike C. Wright and Scott Hamrick. They have a uh, you moved in. They have a local podcast. Not only great guys, but are great fishermen on Norman. Well, I might just do that. We can collab as the. Young I know. Kids I, say. I know Mike C. Wright. They're then. Uh, I I met Scott, but they're real good dudes, and they're they're hammers on Norman. Is there anything about your mom I should know? Just to put you on. Is she really like on the beach right now? Nah. No, uh, that we, the, that's a joke. They're all the time going out of the country on oh, these trips, you know. So I got you. I got you. Just a little inside joke. I just wondered. So, you know, 
We're going to do a calendar. Oh, I need to ask you that. You, you fit the build. We're going to do a calendar for, yes, yeah, you look like me. A cheeseburger cool. calendar? What we're going to do is, so listen, I'd love to have it. What's your favorite month of the year? <sighs> I'm going to have to go with April. April. Okay, April flowers. Yeah, bring. Okay, are you good? Are you comfortable in the thong? Oh yeah, wear one every day. Good, you're gonna be in the calendar. All right, I'll talk to you about details about that later. More as long time. as it's now pink. we got Mr. April. As long as, as it's Mr. Pink. April, that's right. Pink. Yeah. And as long as you ain't like Stephen Bardell, and he said he needs two thongs. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> questioning that. We didn't go there. <laughs> we didn't go there. So Stephen Doberly, we got a serious question. All right, what is the best swim bait to put on my? On, on his underspin for Lanier right now. What's the best swim bait? So you make some products you know, that will, you know, go with swim baits. If you had to pick one, what would you be using? You a Kitech guy? You What What are you? What are you you Ki guys put Kitech? Ki I don't think you can go wrong. I just wish they'd make them damn things where they last more than one fish. Well, like the, the Zoom Swimmer is really good. It's a lot, it's a lot more um, durable. Right. Um, but sometimes I think the softness of the bait, makes the action it does it does but it's still like you know they just don't last you know and, and but they're so good yeah they're just so good uh all right kj wants to know any new products coming out soon we're gonna get to that we're just kind of buttering them up getting them comfortable on the podcast getting them in his groove and also guys listen we're gonna do two questions uh sponsored tonight by greenfish tackle so we got a couple of good prize packs and i mean like good prize packs and of course, Kevin's got these hard ass questions ready for you. Look at him. He's serious. Are you are you in the zone? You ready? I'm ready for he you. is ready for you tonight. So we're gonna be hold one of them things up. Like, look, like this stuff's got spinner baits and jigs and there's shaky heads. 12 in each bag. Like 12 products in each bag. So we want to thank Greenfish Tackle. You didn't know you're sponsoring the question of the week tonight, but you are. No, there right. we go. But we're gonna have two of them. The so lovely Miss Thornton is also tuned in. Oh yes, well that's that's Kevin's wife. Wait, wait, wait. And mama. my mom. Oh, that's oh, your I, mom. Oh, okay. that's your mom. That's oh, my, she's with your mom. I was going to say your wife was hot. Oh, they're in Orlando. Your mom. They're in Orlando. Kevin out punted his coverage big mm, time. I hate Orlando. You going to ICAST? Probably not. We. I've been. Past, I'll go, I got to go. Again. I mean, I'll go. I'll probably go just to walk the floor. I don't know. Yeah. Well, Miss Thornton, hey, it's always a pleasure for you to be on there. You add class to the podcast so Absolutely. appreciate you guys is that good i don't add any class not as much as your wife well i understand that. you understand that we gotta put you in your place right there you're this good. has been you're prorated good. your wife is it's prorated kevin you do know what you rank absolutely so uh actually i just ordered some more green fish jigs this morning hey there you go i told you like jeremiah will buy uh is he a fool question mark so i don't know what that comment was dana i'm sure he's probably talking about me um Dane also says, some days they want a paddle tail, some days a straight tail. Try both and let the fish tell you. And he's talking again, what swim bait is the best? I know uh, one of the ones that's been moving out of the shop here lately is the Fishco Radar Shad. And it is it does not have the paddle tail. But some guys, they're going to throw that Kitech uh, all the more. So podcast is Fishing Le Legends Live. That's what we should have named this one. But, yeah, that's good. So uh, I've started gluing my Kitech hit to my jig heads and they do last a little bit longer now. So there's you guys a tip. I always carry some super glue. I use it for my knots because I tie a terrible knot. <laughs> no, no shit. Listen, I put that, I put that braid to floral. I tie that old Alberto knot and I try to get just perfect. And I just don't trust myself. I put a little dab of super glue on it just and pray to the fishing gods and say, just please hold, please. Uh, hold. What do you tie? I tie a improved Albright. What is that closest to for somebody? Knowing, I mean, is it Alberta? Alberta? Yeah, yeah, close okay. to an Alberta. Yeah, it's real close um, to an Alberta. All right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I tie. I mean, I'm pretty simple on my knots. I tie three knots. The, the improved Albright. Anthony Gagliardi already taught me how to tie that probably 15 or 20 years ago. It's the only one I tie braid to flora with. You just make a loop, wrap like 10 times, <laughs> go back through the loop, pull it tight. Yeah. You don't tie that dad busted FG knot in? No, I, no, I don't. I don't do that. And then I tie a polymer knot and a a clinch knot or a fisherman's yeah, knot. That's, that's, that's all I tie. Those I are mean, three. It takes a PhD to tie a daggum FG knot. I yeah, oh, I'm not. Knot. I'm not. And I'm not coordinated enough. No. Uh, so anyway, Derek White, can I get a 500 pack of bad little dudes? Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll sell them bulk. 
There you go. All right. So, hey, there you go. <laughs> go to it's greenfishtackle.com, right? Greenfishtackle.com. Greenfish Shoot us a message. and uh, Yeah, you can do that. Now, I will tell you this. So, um, I'm going to start doing this with this podcast. All of our guests and all of our sponsors will have links to their sites and their YouTube pages and everything. We're going to start doing that in the description below. So, when you turn around tomorrow, give me a little time because I'm going to go home and go to bed after this podcast. But tomorrow, I'm going to start putting all the links there. So, uh, but you can just go to greenfishtackle.com definitely for that. And, uh, oh, he said that's the best spotted jig ever. The uh, high pray. Now, listen, Derek. Bad little dude. Did we bring yeah. a bad little dude with us? So, yeah. Pull yeah, the so prize pack out. Pull that. So, uh, I will tell you this. Uh, Derek White's a pretty good angler. He's a good angler. He, he catches a lot of fish here in North Georgia. So, if he says that, that's high. You just yell at him. Oh, hey, go. go get my rod off of the um, – my bad little dude rod off of Okay, the so this is the BLD, the bad little dude right there. If you guys can see it, I'll try to get it with the light ain't on there. So, What I was amazed at when I looked at it, the hooks are super – What kind of hooks you use? That right there is a VMC. VMC. Everybody thinks that that hook is – um like super light and they're like, Oh man, I'm not going to, I'm not, I need a beefy hook. I think a lighter hook like that, a smaller gauge hook hooks fish better and stays hooked better than one of those big beefy flipping jig hooks, you know, where yeah. everybody thinks that's going to hook them, but I think it tears a bigger hole. I mean, I have caught some big fish on that little bitty jig. Yeah. And BMC is a good hook. Yeah. They make yeah. great products. Absolutely. Um, uh, what? It looks stout to me. Yeah, it does. But you know, we have I guys, like it. I like the smaller hook. Do you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I know a lot of guys like the, um, they'll say, I want a finesse hook and all that. I'm like, well, what's your definition of finesse hook? Some guys are like that. It's just a little bit smaller, but then some guys really want that like light wire. Yeah, you can bring it on over here. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show. that good-looking man right there in the background. He's got a rod and everything. We got props tonight on Fish North Georgia's The Live Well. I don't know if you can see this in the. We can see it if you hold it to the back of your seat. Like if you. But keep this is kind of what we did. I started doing this, and um, so the guys at Zoom are really good friends of mine. I'm good friends with Chris Baxter and Eddie Wortham and 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 Junior, and um, they make a worm called a Z crawl worm. Yep. And when we made this jig, there was really not a trailer. Like I would cut a, a Z crawl Junior down, and it still created a big. A bigger profile i'm like i want the profile to be small i want the jig to fall fast because we catch a lot on scope with this jig yep i mean it's the, the biggest deal so what i do is i take a z crawl worm and cut the tail off of it and that basically becomes your, your trailer i don't know where the camera uh, is yeah here, I, I, can you yeah yeah we're not going to zoom in just but put it well, actually right there you can hold it right there in front of him so that is the tail off of z crawl Correct? I said that no, right. That's a Z crawl worm. Z crawl worm. Yep. And you just cut it right there when it bends down and, and makes and it's a it's a perfect bubbles little, back out. Yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. It's the perfect little trailer. Zoom in on it. I, I tell you what, let, hold up, hold on a sec. Pull that thing off one more time. Tim, do you think we can work this? You think you can zoom in on my camera? I can. Uh without knocking everything over. So and the, the thing about this jig too is when see if you can zoom in right there. There we go. When there you go. Look at there. And so look now, at that. Oh, this way. No, nope, that way. That way. Yep. There you go. And just show him that you know and that's so here's just the, top the of tail it. of the Z crawl worm is just cut off. Yep. Okay. Well, there you go. There you go. Look at that technology. Look at them hands, man. Them beautiful. I got you. And then I'll put it on there. You can show there out. There you go. So what it does is it doesn't have a hole. There's not a lot. You're gonna of, do it one more time, Tim. I'm going to show you this jig. There's not a lot of bulk in it. Uh, and this jig is not a color that we make. This is John's color. This is a custom color. So, so, anybody, that wants this, <laughs> so anybody that wants this color right here. It's not for sale. No. Go to greenfishtackle.com and request John's color. No. Yeah. John's color. John's color. Got a little chartreuse in it. There you go. Let me see if I can give it a nice little spin. Hey, yeah. Look at there. I'm glad I cleaned my fingernails. There you go. All right, good. Good deal. 
So that's pretty interesting, though. So taking that worm, that 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 worm, and being able to cut and get that. Well, you know, a lot. I mean, people would do it, but a lot of people may not think outside the box and and just cut that off and you know make their own trailer out of it. Which I'm always tinkering. My my wife calls it. Uh, I'm out there sniffing fishing lures, because um, I'm all the time. That's better than anything my wife says. <laughs> Well, you know, when I had a tackle store, I had a tackle store like this. Um, we had a, a buddy of mine. Uh, his name's Reno Reasoner. He was he was working in there with me, and I love the smell of Zoom worms. I just I don't. There's something about the smell. Even when I walk into Zoom, like Wortham and Baxter say, "Oh, I don't even smell it," but I go in there and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this smells so good." The they plastic do have, or whatever. They do have a unique smell to them. And so I I would open up, and when we get a, a shipment in from from Pittman or somewhere, and I always just open up the back, the fresh bag of worms. You back it. there, you're a worm sniffer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah. So one day I was back there in my office, and and uh, Reno come back there, and he was like, "Oh, John, we got this new coat. Smell this bag." What the hell? The girls next door at the thing had a little dog. He took a dog turd, put it in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We Thank almost you. got the vapor lock. Oh, <laughs> no. I'm good. I'm he's good. he's close. He's Look at him. vapor lock. He's going to blow up if he gets vapor lock. Oh, Lord. Are. That's pretty mean. Yeah, that was that was pretty bad. But it's kind of funny. It's kind of, I mean, it was, I thought it was funny. <laughs> hey, pull up a couple. There's a couple questions. I want to make sure I don't miss them. And the guys, again, listen in the comment section. If you have a question and we miss it, type it in there again. Go up a couple from where you now, yeah, going up right there to guy B. Uh, put up, uh, go one more above that. Dane said, X zone crawls, uh, pairs great with the BLD as well as the Picasso little spotty. You can get the X zone trailers at Fish North Georgia. They have not arrived yet, they are coming. Um, Keith Williams said, Don't blow his head too big. I need him to catch fish on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't blowing nobody. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and here, go, here goes our monetization again. <laughs> Look at me. No broke back mountain here in this North Georgia. No. No broke back mountain. Uh, uh, anyway, you close. We about got him to blow right look there. At, oh, oh, look at he was on the, on the edge. He's on the edge. I'm holding it in. You're doing yeah. good. You're maintaining You're well. maintaining. Guy B wants to know, what's the most sensitive jig rod under $200? Any of you guys can answer that. You got a preference for a jig rod? He's got his jig rod. What do you This is what I throw. Stand by. Um, <laughs> here we go. What is this? Good Lord, there's a rod flying across This there. is This is the rod that I throw my BLD on. It is a Arc Essence uh, 7.3 medium heavy. Um, it's just, per I mean, it's perfect for me. And not, I think I think these retail at like 179 Yeah. I mean. If you want one, I can get you. I can, I can order you one in. Uh, I tell you what, arc rods are making a, a big statement. Uh, we've got a few here at the shop, and we're going to be adding the Invoker Pro Tour Series, and I think that's the next one up. I think that's a – so arc rods makes a great one. I know a lot of guys, um, you know, I do find that with rods, it's kind of a personal thing, what you get and what you like, what you have confidence in. And so Yeah. You know, but I like that. So um, looks like a Rage Menace. Yeah, Casey Blanton said I need 25 packs of the uh, Creepy Crawler style. So I, I guess – I don't know what you're talking about, Casey. Call me. <laughs> we'll do that. <laughs> so, Katie Carmichael, and I guess this is to you, Kevin. Do you know Katie? I do. Hey, Big Kev. Hey, Katie. So Grant and I are tuned in. You definitely add class to the show. Well, all righty then. Let me tell you. Great. Yeah, I guess you got them buttered up right, don't you? I went to school with my son. Both. Of okay, them. good. So, I don't I don't need to crack no jokes on that. We got to make sure we're good with that. I got a story about him, but we won't say it tonight. It's about the bathroom. Oh, do tell. He dated a girl in our neighborhood. Uh huh. But anytime he had to go to the bathroom, he wouldn't go in her house. He'd come down to our house. Mrs. Thornton, can I use your bathroom? And then go back down to her house afterwards. <laughs> he didn't want to blow it up. No, he didn't. He, didn't want to blow it up. <laughs> he has never lived that down, and I won't uh, forget it. Hey, well, that's good. Listen, you got to be confident Lord. in yourself. But they are. They're a great couple. That's cool. That's very cool. So appreciate you watching tonight. Uh, is that a Z crawl junior? No, what was it again? It was a Zoom. It is a Z crawl worm. Worm. That's Cut right. Cut the tail worm. off the Z crawl worm. That's right. So lipstick or fishing? This is Mr. Megalodon. Yep. This is a guy that every every day he's got his clients on these big old spotted bass on Lake. He, he's to me the, the best guy out there. The little finesse jig. 
Uh, where'd you go there? My Greenfish is a favorite of mine. So that's high praise if he says that. Because cool. the man, he puts people on fish. So if he likes it, that's good. Uh, Tony Callum. By the way, guys, listen, I found Tony on, on TikTok. So you guys go follow him on TikTok. Uh, I cut a Z-Crawl Jr. all the time. It's still bulky. So that's a great tip. Go to the worm a little bit, and it yep. takes that bulk away from yep. it. So, uh, Scott Mieres, I hope I said that. Well, the, right. the, the, the next thing, too, I mean, if you want to do it when you cut the worm, you still got this leftover worm that you could fish it wacky. Like a Cinco <laughs> like or something. A, like, like a yeah, Ned Rig or, right. or something like that. So uh, I hope I said your last name right. I haven't, reckon, I haven't seen that name, and if you've been on here, forgive me, but I appreciate you joining us tonight. What's the most popular color of BLD that Greenfish produces and sells? Ooh, I would have to say it is probably be between new green pumpkin and spot on. Okay, spot on. Give me a little description. Spot on is um, uh, a color that new came up with. When we're sitting around the shop, you know, we're all just sitting in there. It's like uh, um, this looks good. That looks good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, what's the show? The Duck Dynasty. Yeah. So we're all just sitting in there cracking up, you know. And and uh, Brian New is a good buddy of ours. He'll come in and he'll sit over there and he's a tackle junkie. Like I mean, just to the nth degree tackle junkie. And he'll be tying them up. Well, he was trying to pick the colors for his jig, and he tied one with cotton candy and green pumpkin. And he was like, "This is it." And I was like. No. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We're never going to sell this. He's like, dude, I'm telling you, this is a color they love. Like, think about morning dawn. Well, I'm, I'm spots yeah. eat that morning dawn. Yes, they do. Like crazy. They do. So we, I said, all right, we'll do it. So it's just green pumpkin and um, cotton candy. And we were trying to come up with a name. And I was like, man, that's spot on. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> and so it, it kind of plays off of it, it. it's a spot color. Yeah. You know, and then the, it's spot on. Spot right? on. So, so it went from you, I'm never gonna sell it to spot on. Yep. And we 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 went to um so Hartwell Classic. Uh where was the classic last year? It was in Birmingham or Tennessee, one of the two. Tennessee, Tennessee. Right, Tennessee. Tennessee. Right. So the one it, it it the year before was at Hartwell. That's when we launched the jig, and we we were in with a with a tackle dealer, and we launched the jig. New led the first day, and he caught two of his big ones on the BLD on that spot on color. Well, I had called um, Wortham, and I was like, "Hey, we need we doing this spot on color, and I want some Z crawl worms." to sell with the, as a trailer. So I could show people how to use it for a trailer. Right. Well, they made the spot on, they matched the spot on color for me. So it's green pumpkin with, uh, with cotton candy, like laminate color. Ah. And he's like, well, how many bags you want to sell? And I was like, I don't know. Give me a hundred. We were out in probably 30 minutes. There you go. Oh. Underestimated that one. Bit, <laughs> Way yeah. underestimated. But it. better to underestimate than to overestimate. Than to overestimate. That's exactly but. right. Let's see. Caleb D. Williams. Davis Madden is cracking a 22-pound bag on Saturday. You heard it here first. Uh, is that one of you? I doubt that. <laughs> hey, listen, like, if your ass don't get 22, we're going to call you out on it. <laughs> I doubt that. 22 pounds. So, Caleb, appreciate you watching tonight right there, buddy. Um, i tell you what. Let's answer Bass Fishing 32's question right here. And then we're going to do the first of our question of the nights because we got two of these great gift bags from Greenfish Tackle to give away. I'm telling you, like, I really want to steal one for myself. Um, but let's ask, let's do this question first. What's y'all's favorite colors? Now, that's a general question. Let's just talk jigs. What's your favorite color of jig? There ain't but one color. It's got to be a green pumpkin in it. Brown. Brown? You like the brown jig? Rubber. Brown, I mean, I've caught more fish on a brown rubber jig than I have caught on anything. That's interesting because I got a, a buddy of mine. I got to tie up some brown jigs. And actually, the winner of the week last week, the question last week, I got to tie him up 10 jigs. I got the heads ready. But he wanted brown. Not a lot of requests up in this part of the country for brown jigs. Just a few. So is it more where you fish, you think? Or you think that works everywhere? <laughs> I throw a brown jig just about, I mean, like that, that color, you know, if I'm, but I'm, I'm typically not throwing a silicone jig. 
I'm gonna throw a you rubber, like jig rubber jig. Up, I mean, you are old school. Yeah, I'm. A, I throw a rub. I throw um, our little rubber jig for the for pretty uh-huh. much the most. I don't. Th- did you bring that jig in? You high schoolers, man. Yes, there's there's one in that in that gift bag. If you want to show well, it. Gosh, if you answer this question right, you're gonna. They're all rubber, aren't they? Um, all rubber, rubber jig. And you know, you you say that this with this whole uh, forward facing sonar deal, um, Tyler Williams, who is and and Kyle Patrick, who are two rookies that are on the Elite Series. Tyler won the um, Watch Bar Open last year on that jig right there, throwing at dots. Kyle Patrick the next week went to Lake of the Ozarks. One with that jig right there, throwing at dots. Gotcha. They both just finished, made the top ten at Fork with that jig right there, throwing at dots. That, so, yeah, so it's just a straight brown, brown head, brown rubber. Everybody thinks, you know, oh, you got to be throwing a minnow at them, you know, and throw I'll that big jig. Best. It gives a big return, and mm-hmm. when they're on the bottom, they eat. It's like a fight or flight type deal. They're either going to eat it. Or run from it. You know what? That's interesting you brought that up because I know some guys that are very much scopers, very much scopers, and they absolutely will throw jigs at those scope fish. Oh, yeah. As much as they'll throw anything right there. So, Tim, I don't know if that's showing up on our screen out there. You see that there on the computer? Well, you think remind about me it. later. I don't think it is, but just in case, hit that remind me later. Um, yeah. Uh-oh. Hit that red button up there at the top. There we go. Um, I don't think it showed up on the I don't the think it did. So if it did, guys. It blinded man. me back here. Yeah. Brown rubber, if you ain't winning with it, you're getting beat by it. There you go. I had a vote up there for PB and J. And of course, black and blue, black and red, brown and orange, uh, black, green, pumpkin, search. Damn, Jeremiah, you got 15 favorite colors right there. <laughs> so brown with a cinnamon trailer on a Lanier is a lot of the time for me. Uh, that there. So pull up the next one. I'm going to fish with Rob this Saturday. This is a fellow I was telling you about fishing with on Lanier. John has a, a is an OG. He had a great time hanging out with him at the Classic. Man, we got lit up a few nights. <laughs> okay, so what, that's a uh, story. so uh, uh, so I on. know Rob. I knew I knew that name. Uh, I guess you and him got lit together. That's the, I've I've gotten lit. <laughs> I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I've gotten a little tipsy with several folks at the Classic before. Well, there you go, so Rob. Hey, Rob, sadly, we'll talk about some behind the scenes stuff that you can let me know, though. So we got a little juice on here. Ask him, uh, Rob, where did we hang out at the classic? Okay, so there you go. Um, I thought the only way to fish forward facing sonar is with a jig. Well, Michael Temples, you know that. You're one of the guys that have figured that out. So there's several, especially on our, uh, I fish an electric only trail. A lot of them guys that I know that are really successful, they'll scope. They'll see the fish, and a lot of people throwing the well, fish heads at them, but they'll throw that jig. Let, right let me, uh, let me. This is going to preface this. Uh, it's a new product that we have not, we have not come out with yet. We haven't named it yet. All right, here we go. But we've been playing with it, and we've been catching fish on it. And everybody says, "Uh, for you know, a jig is a good forward facing sonar bait. A minnow head is a good forward facing sonar bait." So what we have did was combine the two. Yeah, so you might have to – hey, I know I'm making you work hard back There's there, There's Rob's Tim. answer real quick. Oh, this is – you stayed with Louie and him at the cabin in Knoxville. So what happened at the cabin, John? Oh, the cabin in Knoxville. Uh, that was <laughs> – yes. That Anytime was, you uh, answer uh, with, oh, the cabin uh, in Knoxville. Oh, oh the uh, cabin. Yes. <laughs> yes, I – yes, we did. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, zoom in on me one more time because this is a new product drop. It's not fish. even named yet. Not it's named not- yet. If you guys got any good name examples, but what it is is you got your fish head. No, that's the Demiki head. That's the Demiki the, head. A, yes, the, the, the bad little shad. Bad right. little shad. You got the skirt right there. There that's we go. It. What out hook is that? Is that a- that's a one, but it's going to come in a one all and a three all. The, so you guys it'll, see it right it'll there. probably be in in like four, five, Man, six yeah. shad colors. Yep. Um, possibly a green pumpkin one, but that that's basically. Um, so you're combining the best of both worlds, right there. Is what you're doing. It. Yeah. I call it the swig. 
There you go. You're gonna start getting. You're gonna start getting these guys. Stuff. Well, I, hey, that's what we need. Uh, and if if somebody names it and we use it, I'll send you some of them. There you go. So hey, you guys in the comment section, do that. Yeah, that's how we got the live well name. We oh, put really? we put it. We used to be called Fish North Georgia's, not whatever the hell we called it back in the day. I don't even remember. But they um, we put it out to our our followers and the guy said the, why not the live well and we went with the live well so that's how it, oh, cool. so sometimes that's how it works all right guys so let's let's do the first question of the week now again as i preface every single one of these if you don't get it it's not my fault it's kevin's over here so this is a hey, listen these green fish prize packs are loaded this is some very good stuff so ha, first of all before you ask it how many answers are there four Jeez louise four answers Okay, so again, <laughs> if you put down two of them, you ain't gonna win. You got to put down all four. If you only put one, you're probably helping somebody else out. So I thought it was two. I thought it was two too. It jumped to Here four. No, it's four. Oh, good lord! Here we go. All right, so for the first green fish prize pack, Kevin, please your question of the night. Okay, who was the first angler to win both the Bassmaster Classic and Angler of the Year in the same season? So I need to know his name and the date. And when was that same feat duplicated again by another angler? I need to know his name and date. Okay, uh -huh. so say it one more time. Can I answer it? No. <laughs> you Who can't was... win your own shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it away, but I know the answers. <laughs> Who was the first angler to win both the Bassmaster Classic and the Angler of the Year in the same season? I need the name and date. And when was that same feat duplicated again by another angler? Again, the name and date. Okay, so Bassmaster Classic and what else? Angler of the Year. And Angler of the Year in the same season. The first guy that did that ever. And then when was it duplicated again and by who? That'll be okay. a name and a date and a name, name and a date. Name and a date. For you guys, yeah, for you guys in Marble Hill, Georgia, name and a date, name and That's a date. That's the best layman's terms I could put that it That is it. So while you guys are Googling your butts off on your phones and everything, <laughs> uh, got a couple of name suggestions for you. Uh, SWJ swimhead jig. You got the kilted swimmer. You know why I thought about calling it the mini skirt, the mini skirt, and I get why he says the kilt. Yeah, I yeah. get I, so, look, the swole jig. Well, all right then. Okay then, the swole jig. We'll go with that. Listen, there's nothing. There's nothing. Uh, no wrong answers right here. Mark Davis, nineteen ninety. He uh, who's yeah, he's right. <laughs> that was actually pretty. Grant quick. Carmichael. No. Nope. Darian Moss. Da yeah, Darian, Darian Moss. Darian Moss is the first one. Grant, you are so close, but Darian Moss beat you. The answer is Mark Davis, 1995, and it was duplicated again by Kevin Van Dam in 2010. So congratulations. Good that good. Oh, I'm about to die with that Josh stroking Shad. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of came out of nowhere. <laughs> it's right under the answer right there. I know you can't reading. miss it. So Darian. Uh, message me if I don't have it. I might even have it, but send me your address where I can ship this to you. Uh, hit me on Messenger, Danny Pruitt at Facebook. And if you don't have Facebook, just answer back in that, and we'll, we'll figure out a way to get in touch with you. So, Grant Carmichael, listen, we got another one of these great prize packs again, so you guys stay tuned. But, again, thank you guys for – that was actually quick for one of yours. It really was. It that was. was the, it, well, Good. yeah. So, you got the pug. You got the tweaking shad. You guys keep coming up. Sooner or later, something's going to click, and we'll do that. Now, um, let's kind of transition a little bit because you brought in a just a boatload of different baits and kind of, you know, we already talked about your stroke and chat right there, whatever <laughs> we want to call it. So, chat GPT. Yeah, so there you go. So, G Money by Greenfish Lures. Well, there you go. So, Money Jigs. See, these guys are great. My, my, the followers that watch this show. We got to incorporate great. the bad little shad into it into it somehow you know i, I was gonna like i was thinking bad little shad mini skirt okay so um, you guys go go off of that so your answer has to be bad little shad dot 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 so go with that so that'll help you out a little bit um you got some pretty interesting little baits sitting there right there beside you we can talk about those first and we can talk about whatever you want to talk about that's going on with green fish but what have you got sitting right there on the table right beside you there Oh, because you do what you got. What we haven't talked about is not only do they make great jigs and stuff, but this man also does some custom painting. Yep. Does custom painting. And, you know, and I will tell you this, that a lot of guys say they do custom painting, but you know, the difference between somebody that 
does custom painting and a guy that went up to Hobby Lobby and got him an airbrush <laughs> because trust me, those guys are out there. Those guys out there, but right, let's talk about what you got so right for, beside you. For all these Lanier guys, I've been, um, I mean, we're from Clark Hill, so we live on a Heron Lake. Um, we we throw the – or used to throw the Seville a lot more until they came out with this shishimi. Spro came out with the shishimi, and it is unbelievable. That fourth joint makes all the difference in the world in the tightness of the bait and, and the way it naturally swims like a heron. I mean, a heron doesn't swim – you know, like this, he swims like this. Yeah, he's tight. He's real tight. So that fourth joint really makes a difference um, in the heron fish. So I just paint different ones, um, custom colors. This is actually a foiled bait. Um, I think when I paint chrome, now I do paint over chrome, but when you paint over certain colors, you can't achieve certain colors. Right. So... Painting, um, it's hard for me to explain this. Like painting, when you paint over chrome, it doesn't, you don't achieve the same bottom color and top color because the whole bait is chrome. Yeah. Well, when I fold the side, I can achieve a true pearl butt belly and a lot more greener back because it's painting over a clear bait. Yes. It makes a 100% difference. So this is the full one. We're calling that one uh, Fold Heron. And I'm going to tell you right now, he's going to have to fight me to get this one out of the shop. Mm -hmm. Like, seriously, if there's anything that he has that, that I want to steal, that's it right there. That color is awesome. That color. What you probably can't see on the camera is this guy actually. Hold it up, Danny. I'll zoom in again. Zoom in because what you can't see from there is there is a hue of pink on the side. And I don't know. Okay, so. Oh, let me get it right there. There we go. So I don't know. You can kind of tell it, but with the lights here, they're so bright. But you can kind of see a little bit right there where it looks a little purplish on the side right there. It's actually more of a pink kind of. And this one's a bad little dude right here. This is this is good. So this is a Spro Shishimi. It's a shimmy, yep. And will these be available on your website they are on the website right now i can tell you the colors that i brought with me today yeah they're all great looking. there's six of this uh, I'm sorry. there's six of that fold heron on the website there's six of this color when the the Sabil color that we used to catch them on back in the day was white lady and so i painted up this one we call it um uh, white flash. Okay. It's just, uh, it's but hard. Low to, tech here. It's hard to see the detail in it with the, with the, with with the that lighting. light right there is so bright. It's scaled, Bill. Yeah, it's it's scaled. Kind of roll it back and forth. There but go. they're on the web, they're on greenfishtackle.com. You can look at the picture. Yes, Amanda. And, um, <laughs> and see them. <laughs> Things my wife says are 100. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave it zoomed in. This yeah, one right here work. is another little heron color that's got the green back. You know, it's, it's got yes, the, like see. like that heron has got a green back, and he's got a real whitish silverish side. There we go. That is one fantastic look. All these look great. And again, like you said, that fourth joint on this shishimi. It makes all the difference. Now, let me ask you this. Do you ever change your treble hooks out to a, to a feather trailer on the back? I know a lot of guys on one there. The big thing is to change it out. I have. I'm just curious. I have. And, I mean, I think it works. I mean, I, I think it gives it a little, like, a tail look to yeah. it. Um, I don't see where it is. It makes that much of it. Yeah. I, I got you. That action looks amazing, too. And I, I'm telling you, um, a lot of you guys were throwing out answers to what the name of that bait is. Y'all type them again because we've done scrolled up. we got other comments coming in. Somebody said the bad little hula skirt. The bad little hula skirt like this. So, J.P. Vern just got in from work in the gym. Thanks for sharing, Vern. What's his, yeah, like, like he had to throw that in and kind of, I've been at the gym. <laughs> well, so, what's his website? It's greenfishtackle.com. Greenfishtackle.com. And, again, these are custom painted. Yeah, these are all custom painted by by me. This one is actually cust this is this one is actually foiled. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I it takes a lot of time. Now these are they're pricey because you know I have to buy them and then I have to I have to sand them. I have to do, oh, yeah, do that, all this stuff to them. Work, then I have yeah. to paint them. Then I have to clear coat them. You know, there's a lot of work involved in them. 
I'll, so, I'll say this, though. I've seen a lot of guys that do, again, quote-unquote custom painting. And you guys might not be able to tell from the camera, but this is some quality stuff right here. And, yes, I'm going to skip a couple of things, but Terry Adams, every single one of these will work at Latham. And like I said, one of these, I don't know if he's going to get back tonight, and that's exactly where I was thinking about throwing that joker. We've got a, we got a little electric reservoir up here, 340 acres, but it's basically a mini Lake Lanier. Oh, got really? Blue back, spots, and largemouth in it. Whatever you do on Lanier or Alatoona, you can do on Latham and just it's 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 a lake. And Terry Terry watches that lake like a hawk. So is it like a public lake or uh Cherokee County Water Authority owns it, so it is a private lake, but they have fishing hours. So winter hours are eight to five, gate kind of really opens about seven thirty, and during the summertime it goes eight to eight. Oh like cool. That. But you better be off in time or Terry or some of us have to let you out and they don't like doing that. To yeah. you. Boats got to be loaded up. Get your ass home, you know, like that. Is it, be... is it big motor? Like, can you put no, a... electric on? Electric Don't even have a gas tank on. Right. That's yeah. but no that, glitter but, rockets. But you know what? It's pristine. Right. And the guys that run the lake, Mark and that run lake, they just, that they, they take a lot of pride in that lake. So it, it's just, but you need to get on it sometime. I might have to get you on it when you get up here. Yeah. You know, I know you don't come up here too often, but maybe one time I'll get you. I want to come. I I mean, Lanier is like a pristine place to me. I mean, that, that's probably that. And, and Murray, in my opinion, have got to be the two hottest lakes in the country, right? They're now. great. They're great. But I'm telling you on a good day, I'll put Latham up against Lanier. Really? Yeah. I just, just on the right day. It's like a woman, though. One day it loves you, the next day it hates you. It's <laughs> yeah. like listen, it's yeah. like every lake out there. Yeah. So you females watching again, I'm just you know that's just my personal opinion, not the not fish North Georgia's official stance. <laughs> Paul, go up a couple. There was actually some serious questions. You see these guys? You guys keep reading them things. Is it? Yeah, I'm trying. Fish. I'm trying to short skirt hooker. <laughs> <laughs> the flirt skirt. The flirt skirt. Uh, Bad little intelligent skidded shack. Jig Miki. That's that's funny. We had we were gonna call it the Jamiki, but New was like, I don't want to do that. It's too close to Demi, you know. So. I got you. Yeah. Uh going up. There was a couple of questions out there. So Gabe's right there. Um, he might be fit. What good? Uh I okay. So anyway, you're saying I'm doing a crappy tournament this Saturday on Logan Martin. Any tips on crappy this time of year? And what water temp and depth do crappy spawn? I will tell you this, Gabe. I am not – I just know when the dogwoods bloom, I go crappy fishing. So if any of you guys in the comments section, you crappy guys out there that know the answer to that question, um, please feel free to put it in the comments section. But I would say the crappy are moving up right now. It, they got to be spawning if not getting close. Terry Adams, you, you're out there. You're, you fish for crappy a lot. Maybe you can answer that guy's question. So keep looking in the comments section. And as you're talking about that, next Thursday, uh, next Tuesday night on the Tuesday Nighter, we're actually going to do our crappy episode. So I've got Kyle Reeves of ATX Lures and his buddy Justin coming in, and we're going to do an episode solely on crappy fishing. So make sure you check that out. Um, other than that, boy, they're throwing out the um, they're throwing out the suggestions. Is there a bad little bass spanker? We don't, you don't name anything spanker these days <laughs> like that. So um, look at these guys. See, these guys will help you out. Right Bad there. little shad producer. Yeah. Flirting skirt. Mini skirt. Yeah, I had mini skirt. That was. Yeah. It, it, listen, you guys keep coming. He's going to be looking as we're going. Um, now, is this a Clark's Hill bait? Do you ever use them out on Clark's Hill? Oh, yeah, 100%. So I saw a question up there. When is the time that we start throwing some bill style baits? And I forget who put it up there, but I want to make sure I get that. When does John Harris start throwing some bill style baits? Two times a year. Okay. In the spring during the heron spawn, oh, yeah, cans. you throw it in the dirt. Yep. In the fall, when the fish are offshore, throw it over piles, cane piles, brush piles, anything like that. Right there. You just, yeah. President calling you, you need to get that. Uh, yes, that is the president. That is the president. Is that your wife? No. Oh, okay. That's what I call my wife. So you good? Yeah. Okay. Good. We'll make sure you got. You, you, hey, we're all good. If you got to go to the bathroom, you got to answer an important phone call. We do it right here. So it's our show. We can do it. Um, Fisherman's last cast is a lady's five more minutes. Very interesting. You ready to give away that other prize pack? You want to do it now? We can do it now. Yeah. None during the summer. So Connor. So what he's saying is. So in the springtime, late spring, generally right after the spawn, the herring are going to move shallow and have a shad spawn. 
uh, look at blow throughs, general areas. But when they get up there, a lot of guys will take the Sabil style baits. They'll chunk them up shallow and rip it back through that. And of course, your spots and even sometimes your stripers and all, they're, they're sitting there. It's a buffet because the fish are all located right there in that one area. And then again, in the fall, when they're getting ready to feed up for the wintertime and all that, that's when he's looking more over deep water brush piles, throwing them over there because we do it for top water all summer long. And so now you're going to be bringing a little smaller style bait. To say you cannot catch a fish with it during the summer, thats I mean, you can catch fish with it any time. But those are the two most productive times for John. All right, so put the prez on the show. Who was one to use the prez again? Just come here. Put you, come here. Come here. Let me just show your face. <laughs> Who said put the – Look right here. So, What's up? <laughs> so, so, this, so this is Roper. Roper was the one that contacted me. About getting John on the show, so there you go. So you got your two minutes or two yes, seconds sir. of glory, like yes, sir. So he's right there. So uh, oh yeah, that's Brent story. I see. Oh, is that him? So we know Brent. You should know Brent. He's a he's a Lanier hammer. That's right. Yeah, you, that's the one you mentioned. So mm -hmm. Brent, listen, I'm not quite as familiar with you as apparently I should be. So we need to talk. All right, we need to talk for sure. Uh, and again, right there, uh, Stephen Double is giving you some hints on the crappy like hair jigs and stuff. Uh, Connor's based upon his question earlier, the fish uh, hopping on here right now. Oh, hopping on here now, or did the spotted bass pre spawn deep? Um, spotted bass generally spawn a little bit deeper than the largemouth. So, where you might find largemouth anywhere from a foot to four to five, six foot of water, spots would be generally what you, what would you say? Five to 15 feet. They can be anywhere in that range. So, same thing on Clark's Hill. I think so. I think spots spawn on trees. I mean, I think they, I think they I can. Think, I think they spawn on timber and and live out there all the time. We always talk about that. That we always say there's some fish that stay shallow year round. There's some that stay deep year round, and then you got the other ones that go yep. back and forth. Yeah. So those that stay deep year round makes sense that they would spawn out deep like mm -hmm. that. So we talk about that a lot. So there you go. Are right, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. So all right, guys. Greenfish tackle question of the week number two. Now, how many answers does this one have? This one has three answers. And it's probably harder than the no, one. No, it's not hard. It's it's one name and two dates. Okay, listen there. One name, two dates. This is for the Green Fish Prize Pack right here. It's it's a bad little prize. I'm telling you right there. All right, you ready? So here you go. Here goes quest, uh, Kevin's question. Listen closely. All right. Who was the first angler to have the distinction of being the first angler after? Roland Martin to win back-to-back -back Angler of the Year titles. Okay. So what we need is not Roland Martin, but the next guy to go back-to-back in -back what years? Correct? In what years he did it then? What years? So there you go. Not Roland Martin, but who was the next guy to go back-to-back -back Angler of the Year titles? And I guess this is Bass. This is B-A-S-S, -S, right, Kevin? Yes. All right. So the next Angler to go back-to-back -back after Roland Martin, and what were the years? So remember, you got to have three answers. Three answers in your thing. Uh, Underwood says he agrees that they spawn on timber 100%. So there you go. That's a good thing. And J.P. Vern says, I know they spawn on humps near major creek heads. Absolutely. So Grant Carmichael's got it. Grant, good. He did win. There we go. So Grant Carmichael. Guido, Guido. How, how the hell you say that? Guido. 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 Who names a kid Guido? Uh, is that a nickname? I think that's his real name. I Guido. His real name. Guido Hibden. All right, 1990 and 1991. So there you go, Grant. Again, hit me up on Facebook Messenger at Danny Pruitt and give me your address, and I will ship these things out tomorrow. So, Brian Smith, you're getting close, but she's a little bit slow tonight, babe. So, um, Greenfish in and of itself, do you guys sponsor anybody, any professional anglers, or are known by – I know you're known by – some of them, but do you guys sponsor anybody in particular, or you just a lot of guys use your stuff? Yeah, we um, <clears throat> we sponsor Brandon Cobb, uh, Brian New, uh, Shin Fukai, Casey Ashley, Tyler Williams, Kyle Patrick, um, several other you know opens guy. I mean, right? Jamie Rampy is one that right. is from from this area that's a hammer that um that we sponsor paul little paul we sponsor little paul you do sponsor little paul um, there you go uh little tybo do you know tybo uh -huh. uh, we sponsor tybo um i've had brandon cobb to get on this show sometime i talked to him at icast he said he would do it you're gonna have to help me 
motivate him to get yeah. on here like yeah. that. So um, pull a string for You him. know, a lot of it, when I say sponsorship, you know, right. everybody thinks when you sponsor somebody that you're just giving out tons of money. Well, we're a small company, and it's yeah. all, you know, it's all coming out of my pocket. So um, the guys that I have are basically my friends. And now we, we, we do pay some, yeah, yeah. but, um, they, they do the world for us. I mean, you created those relationships. With yeah. Those guys. I mean, they're, they're like people that I consider like really good friends and, and they help me out more than they know. Right. So, you know? yeah. So, uh, I saw Jeremiah said, Shin, say that name again. Shin. Shin Fukai. Fukai is underrated. So he says he so he must be a really good hammer, you know, not just oh, not getting that. Oh yeah, yeah. Not getting that. So Shin is good. Very so good. Let me ask you this. From a business owner standpoint, and I just want there's a lot of guys that ask us. I have guys come in and shop all the time, wanting sponsorships, wanting to grow, wanting to get the brand. And I have my set answers. But as a business owner, when someone approaches you, what are you looking for in that angler? Or what do you, you know, what are you like? What are the things that will make you possibly consider them or absolutely a turn off? Like, what would be a turn off for a guy? A, a turn off. Because I want these guys to learn. You know what a I'm turn off for me is like if you call or you send an email and, uh, you know, I'm in, I, you know, we get, we get people emailing all the time saying, I, I won my club derby at, such and such lake, yeah. you know, can you sponsor me? I wish we could, but right. We got into the business or I got into the business to profit off of making tackle. 100%. And <clears throat> if we gave it out to everybody that asked, you know, that's the thing about this industry that where there's a lot of industries, you know, that don't have endemics like, you know, um, they don't have the people calling them. Here's the, th here's one of the, the way that I can explain it. So when I owned the, the tackle store, mm -hmm. I had a guy that would come in and, and he, he bought, he came in and he bought like five or six rods from me. Well, the fifth one, he can't, he got, he came to the, uh, cash register. And he was like, man, I bought five rods from you. Uh, you know, you think you can give me a discount? And I said, so, all right, what do you do for a living? He said, I, I cut grass for a living. I said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. You come cut my grass five times, and the sixth time it's free. And if you buy five rods from me, I'll give you the sixth one for free. So, oh, I can't do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, it, now, with that being said, we give to people that help promote our product. That's yes. how, you know, advertisement is very, very, very expensive. And the only way that, that a small company like us can get it out there is through obviously social media platforms, um, that type stuff, uh, which I'm not good at. You know, we, we try to do it. I, I get these kids over yeah. here to try to help me. Out. I'm just, prior to that generation, you know, yeah. where I'm it's real a young man's game. Uh, yeah. Where I'm real good at that. So I'm still the old school way of the anglers. They promote the product and that's how we do it. Yeah. You know? Um, but like, like getting back to your question, a, a turnoff is companies, especially like the size of Greenfish and even a lot of, companies you know most of the companies in the fishing industry are small enough that nothing goes unnoticed yes so if you want something from somebody put the effort in make a few orders use the product you know send in pictures of what you're doing show me what you're doing yeah. before you ask for something yeah 100 percent. you know yeah so that's the thing i don't think a lot of people understand is that, of course, you got to get your return on investment, you know, for sure. But we all would love to be able to give stuff away to everybody. All right. You, you can't. You have to pick and choose the right ones. And I think a lot of, especially younger kids, and, of course, we got, you know, we got some high schoolers back here and guys going forward, eventually they're going to try to go to the next level and they got to 
do the sponsor day. Well, and it's not easy. No, it's not. And I think there's a misconception in in our in this industry, like where the first things that that these high school kids want to do before they learn how to fish and before you know they want to go out and get sponsors because they see these pros and that's their idols that they that they look up to and they have all these sponsors. Well, first off, you got to do is go learn to catch them. Yeah. And then you got to learn the business side of it and learn how to promote. Yeah. There's some people that just get it and there's some people that just don't. Right. You know, you got to find that mixture, that good mixture of catching them and learning to promote and working. You know, yes. I mean, just go out and, and work, you know, do when I say things don't go unnoticed, these companies, most of them, you know, and this is uh, the fishing industry is a huge, huge industry, right? but it's also this big at the same time. Mm -hmm. We all know each other. Everybody talks. You'll hear. So this kid's doing this for me, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's how it, 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 it spreads. Yeah. You know, yeah, and so I, that's kind of what normally on other shows, or we might even have done it here before you hear. What do you look for in a sponsor? That's why I wanted to change it around a little bit. What What is a turnoff? Because I think nobody ever emphasizes what not to do as opposed to what you should do. You know, right, well, a, 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 the biggest turnoff is just an, a random email, you know, of somebody that you just don't know. I'm just going to tell you what I do trash can trash can okay so that's i mean it's really got to be standard you know it's really got to stand out because you can't i would spend hours of my day that i don't have time deciphering <laughs> who tom yeah jig fisherman is and i mean i i appreciate everything don't i mean don't i don't want to come off as not being appreciative of people liking our product and whatnot yeah but, you know there's just a uh, a fine line of which ones that stand out and which ones that don't. Yeah. I see every order that comes through there. Right. If you want to go and you want us to do something, let me see that you've ordered some product. You know? Exactly. Or, I mean, I know we sell wholesale and, and through other retailers yeah. and, and, and stuff, but you know, I mean, it's just a hard, it's a hard decision for me as a company owner to have to turn people down from getting something. But at the end of the day, we got into this to make yeah. money. And, and the reason I asked too is like, we got a lot of high school anglers that watch young anglers. You got some behind us here. They need to actually know that, that it takes more than just a vague email yes. to a company and said, Hey, I love your products. Will you give me X or will you pay $500 right. to put your sticker on my boat or you know what I'm saying? So right. that's kind of why I wanted to go that route instead of saying, what do you look for in a spot? You right. Know? So, and I, I appreciate the you honesty. You got to prove, yeah. you got to prove the value. Right. You know? Yeah, and I appreciate the honesty in your, in your answer right there. Scroll up a couple. There was a couple ones, a uh, couple questions. Go up one more. I saw that. If you could pick one bait for spotted bass year round, what would it be? Ooh. I know what I'm going to say. I bet it's different than yours. I'd probably have to, if I could pick one. One, bait. one bait for spotted bass year round. It would probably be that little jig right A there. jig. Jig's a good choice. I'm a wacky worm crazed fanatic. So I'll throw I, I'm too impatient. Even I, I'll even, throw a weightless one over 40 foot brush pile in the middle of winter. Even Nico and all I'm just too, too impatient. Too impatient? Okay. Yeah. So a jig. What about you, Kevin? I'd go with a jig. Okay. What about you, Tim? Back there working your butt off tonight. Probably shaky head. Shaky head. I guess, but still, we're hitting the bottom. Yeah. You you're, you're hitting off the bottom. Can you talk about your commitment to hand tied jigs? Uh, and, and I tie too. Like we, we talk about, <clears> I like so, I like the hand tie. I don't like bands. I don't either. I just think and, they rot a little bit. You know, my I've always hand tied a jig. To me, it's always been the best way. And when we started doing this, I'm like, what? How could we separate ourselves from every other? jig that is out on the market by most of bigger companies how yeah. can we separate ourselves well we go the extra mile mm -hmm. and we hand tie every single mm -hmm. jig if you you see these two hands right here 
and there's uh, six other hands over there, and there's a couple hands back in Augusta. It they, those jigs are each one is touched by one of us. This right. is not something that's farmed out from overseas. We we're we make all of the tackle. Yeah, you know, right. We we do it all. You know, people think that you know you own a company. It's this big giant warehouse and blah blah uh -huh. blah. No, it, yeah. it's really it's right. you know it's really not. I, think I mean, it's a pride thing too. Like hand tied it compared to just bang, slipping a thing. Well, to me, thing. I mean. I get it, you know, and it's not a price thing now because it used to be to where ours were a little bit more expensive. Not anymore, man. And now, you know, most of our competitors are right there in five forty nine, five ninety nine for a jig. Where ours is hand tied, the competitors is a push on skirt. Yep. And you know, I'm just never going to go away from the commitment to quality. 100%. You know, yep. I mean. That's <clears throat> your name. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You name. know, this, and, and I compare this company to like a child of mine, you know, growing it um, and building it. It's not something that, like this was done from right here in my head. And then a lot of hard work, a lot of getting cussed out from my wife, you know. Staying there. Been <laughs> staying there. staying uh, at work. A hand tied jig. You know, <laughs> a hand tied jig. Uh, if you get a spotted bass, a nil temper spotted bass, they ruin one with a band on it. You're, I agree. I mean, it's, it's toast after a couple of good fish. I agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> and to me, as a, as a company owner, I often sit back and I think, you know, here we are. We're going the extra mile. We're doing this extra mile. Is it really worth it? And at the end of the day, if and don't get me wrong, I mean banded skirts. I'm not saying that they're 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 bad. I'm not going to fish with one. I don't know if I've ever really fished with a banded skirt. I've hand tied yeah. jigs for over 20 years. Yeah, and uh, I just like it. I think the flare is good. The flare is better. I mean. There's certain little things about baits that make the difference. 100%, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's why is this bait going to be better than this one or what, you know, it's, it's the little things. Yeah, so you know what's funny about that is, like, I'll tie me up some jigs, and then I'll say I got a tournament on Saturday. I'm like, I ain't got nothing tied. I'll rush up here, and sometimes I'll band them real quick just so I have the jig. And I'm telling you mentally, when I get on the water the next day – and I got that banded jig. I was like, <laughs> this is, it, in my mind, I'm saying this thing ain't going to work. That confidence it, it's thing. It's a confidence thing, 100%. So, um, yeah, and if you're not confident throwing or, or fishing with what you're throwing, you're yeah, not going to catch 100%, a bass. 100%, 100%. It's all between the ears. The majority of fishing is. The majority of fishing is. Connor Hewitt, pull up that question there. Finesse ball head or football style? And I'm gonna I'm guessing he's gonna assume what's your favorite. <clears throat> to me, I've never liked a traditional ball head. <clears throat> I don't like it for the fact of I like the way it falls. I don't like the way it sits on the bottom. So every if I had to choose, I would throw a football over that. But like what we did with, with our Eakin style jig is what you know the old Eakin's jig is the one with the the skirt cut at the top of it mm -hmm. you know and shorter at the bottom and what we did was we took and took a ball head and I actually took a file and filed out a groove in the bottom of the ball head so it would almost be like a rocking chair and this is the way that's how our itty bitty jig is and that's how our um, <clears throat> Casey Ashley cleanup shaky head is. It's got a, not a flat spot, you know, but it's at an angle where it's got a groove. So it almost has a, 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 a little rock and action to it. To me, a ball head has no stability. When it gets on the bottom, it hits the bottom. It, it will hit the bottom, roll over, hit the bottom, roll over. What you do when you roll that thing over like that is – you snag, you know, if your hook point is out in at all, right. It's snagging. If it's standing up like this, you're, you're fishing on a slack line. You're 
typically going to bring it through the cover a little bit better. I got you. So I, I just like to have some kind of a, a, a contour change on the jig somewhere. I got you. Okay. You know, ball head skip really good. Yeah. But, I mean, if I'm going to skip, I'm going to throw an archie head. When I, yeah. I, don't like reinvent the, the wheel. I mean, exactly. an archie head is tried and true, you know. That's the mold. Yes. Yeah, uh, the archie is. I like this comment by David Weaver. Pull this up. And this goes back to where I was talking to you about <clears> sponsors and what mm -hmm. you're looking for. Forty years ago, when you wanted to fish a pond or find a hunting spot, you had to introduce yourself, be willing to trade work, and be a stand-up person to, to pick up even, uh, I guess, trash when it's not yours and such. So you had Absolutely. to put the effort into it yeah. to get permission. Yeah. So that goes – and that is lost these days. Well, it's almost like it's – it's almost like an, a sense of entitlement. Like, uh -huh. I see all these guys, these pros – well, them pros didn't get those sponsorships by number one, not getting airtime or uh, doing social media stuff. I mean, these kids have it at their fingertips. They can be a influencer or whatever they, yep. you know, it's called. And it it's so easy now. Everybody can can just learn how to do social media. And I mean, yeah, that's how you sell stuff nowadays. It is. It my has, my kids don't changing. watch TV. Yeah. Yeah, one hundred. Like TV is a thing of the past. It's all YouTube. One hundred percent. I mean, like airtime for fishing shows. Like it, it used to either be print media, or you had to get your tackle or your baits on the television show. Now you don't have to do that. You can put it out on Instagram. You can put it out on Facebook, TikTok. Tweety, whatever you want, Tweety. whatever you want to put it out on. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, and and it's, it's all world. out there. It's yeah. all right. I was talking to, to um, <clears throat> I don't remember who it was, but it was this morning, and he was asking me if I was going to the classic, and you know, really introducing baits. The classic used to be the time because that's when the mass of people would show up in one area and you would introduce your baits at the booth well now you don't have to have that you can introduce a new bait social media yep. you could introduce a new one every week and and people would it costs a lot less yes. and people would find i mean it's just it's it's an easy avenue to number one obtain sponsorships do work through that that and to promote whenever yeah. through it uh jp Vern wants to know, do you ever tie any hair jigs um, <clears throat> yes, but not, <laughs> not mass big. to sell. I more, mean, more specialty thing for buddies and you or something. Or like, yeah, I mean, know. I've tied some marabou jigs for guys that go up smallmouth fishing. And we used to tie when that whole preacher jig thing was going on. Um, we tied some one we the shin spin one, we called it a commie. And then we tied one called the deacon. Um, and it had the feathers and the hackle and all that stuff in it. And it, man, it's just so much work. And it is work. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is different than messing with silicone or rubber like that. That's for sure. Uh, pull up. Uh, oh, Connor's got another question. Do you have a jig for spots on deck all year? Now that's one thing too. I will say this: like in these Northern lakes, in North Georgia, most of us do, but like you fish down South a lot. <clears throat> Oconee, Sinclair, and all that. Always have a jig, bro. You always got a jig, but not necessarily for spots. Well, I'm fishing for anything to bite. Yeah. More large amount. As long as it's green. Anyway. Huh? As long as it's green. As long as yeah. it's green. That's right, and legal. Uh, pull up Tony's next two comments because uh, I find these interesting. Business is business. We can all catch fish. You need to make yourself valuable to the sponsor, not the other way around. Volunteer, trade work, etc. And then he says, begging for sponsors is no different than panhandling. Uh, the scamming ones, the scamming, it's a one way deal. And that's another thing, too, is like it's very easy to. And I think young kids need to realize that is that even with the social media, a lot of us that are in business are learning. Yeah, I can give you something. You got to do the work. And a lot of you say, OK, well, I got the stuff I needed now. I don't have to do the extra work. The ones that do the extra work are the ones that's going to get it. It, boil, it boils down to. You do for me what I do for you. If I give you product, I need you to promote it. I need to be out there selling it. I need to see, I need your local tackle store to call me and say, uh, 
so and so told me about y'all's tackle. He said it's really good. I need to, you know, can I place an order? Can I, you know, yeah. do these things? It's, you know, there's only so much that you can get off of having a sticker on your boat <laughs> or, and, and I think or that, a patch on your uh, right. jersey, you know? Right. I will say it's like Rob um, that you partied with in Knoxville. Yeah. So we, um, we sponsored him a little bit this year, best of we could. But one thing that he has made himself available to is to coming in here and doing videos for us and doing those yeah. extra things. And he's always – I think he calls me once a week, hey, you want to go for it? <clears throat> and it's those kind of things that yep. at least – and I didn't give – you know, we don't have a lot to give, but at least it makes me feel like, you know what, he cares for us and that business relationship. And the next thing is, is if you want a company to sponsor you, yeah, truly like their product. I agree with that. Yeah. Truly know the product line. I mean, I'll have people call me, oh, I, I like that that spot sticker uh, jig head y'all got. And I'm like, uh, we're not spot sticker. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, it, yes. it's like, know what you're trying to, you can, we can tell the ones that are just trying to get free stuff yeah. over the ones that truly fish our product yeah and there's so many brands out there and they're all good i mean i'm you know i'm friends with most like th this is a misconception is that that um companies compete yeah we are competing but there is a camaraderie between us of bait makers you know we go to these shows and then after the shows we're all hanging out we we call them like how are you getting this material where are you getting this from we help each other out i mean it, there's a camaraderie in bait making in the bait making world that is almost unlike any other business right you know maybe i don't know other businesses but you know we help each other out yeah uh, you know and so, i find that to be true even with tackle shops you know in tackle shops we talk we know what you yeah know. and as long as you keep that good relationship business you're willing to tell each other what's going on and I know you didn't expect tonight when you're driving up from Augusta that we were going to talk a lot about sponsorships and stuff. But I'm glad you are because that's an important thing, especially with all the young kids watching that are getting into this that want to know, you know, what do I need to do to get a sponsor. What do I need and the, it's, the it's biggest thing more. you need to learn first off is go learn how to catch them. That's right. Go learn how to fish. It's much easier to give a Paul Marks Jr. whatever than it is a random kid that you don't know. Don't you know, worry. Value. Don't worry about the sponsorships. If you catch them, mm -hmm. the sponsorships will come. Know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it it don't go unnoticed. Yeah. I mean, if there's some kid out there that's that's dominating and and winning, um, you know, BFLs or winning even local derbies. I mean, you know them. The southeast is yeah. not a very. It's a big area, but the fishing community is very small. Like. It travels like so and so kid is killing him up here around Murray. You know he's really good. You know you might want to try yeah. to contact him. You know, yeah. go like learn how to catch them. Yeah, and that'll prove that'll get all the sponsorships you need. One hundred percent. And it doesn't help if you're good looking with nice hair and all that. It, <laughs> I mean, I mean that 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 helps. You know, yeah, but it does but help. it really go learn how to catch them is my my best advice. What up, David? Uh, you pulled it up. Pull it back up, David Weaver. And and this is why I asked him this, David. I love this content and the perspective of the businessman. This is awesome. And that's that's why you need something. I'm getting Aiden to get me my diet coke. Hey, he needs something to drink. <laughs> Bartender Joe Boo needs a refill up here. I got another one in the in the fridge if you need a nice cold one. Yep, that's yep. what I'm getting that's him to get. Need, okay, yeah. here. get a little parts. Then you need a I diet coke. You. I get it right there. So, um, but that but but and I'm glad I'm, I really am appreciative of the fact that you're talking about this. I, it was not even on my radar is what to yeah. talk about like that night. But I do think it's a perspective that you know. Needs to be addressed because you got high school fishing and college fishing is so huge now. And just like you guys are going to fish, what'd you say? 200, 250 boats might be this weekend on Lanier. So you got just take right. right 200. So say two kids per boat, roughly four or 500 kids just on this one lake alone this weekend that are going to be blasting off fishing. And um, that every one of them's got that dream <coughs> of one day being able to. Fish at a higher level, and but they got to learn that sponsorship game. And I know the pro guys; it's not even easy for them. No, it's it's you got to prove it. 
Yeah, there's it's it's not these people think that these um top level pros are out and they because they have a patch on their their or a or a emblem on their boat and everything that they're getting paid all this money that they get all these free things, man. Those guys work for a they the passion for fishing drives what they do. Yeah. You know, there's there's the money in smaller bait companies like us it's just not there yeah you know what i mean we don't it, have the it, big overhead advertising budgets and all that <clears> no yeah. we don't i mean this is coming out of my pocket you know doing this um this company so you know it, it, and you have to strategically make your decisions as to where you want to spend your money you know the fishing industry is a lot different than other industries like let's just say baseball yeah so my son likes to play baseball well you don't see kids that play baseball go to rawlings and de marini and easton and all this stuff and sending them these emails saying hey i play uh at my local rec league or i play on this travel ball team can i get sponsored by you doesn't happen it doesn't happen in, doesn't in those it does not exist right in this industry, it's different because the kids and anglers see the professionals with all these logos all on there, and that's what they want to be. Mm. You know, like I'm sure professional baseball players get free gloves oh, yeah. or, yeah. you know, free things once they make it to that professional level. But here, it's almost like they think that they have to have these sponsorships and they have to have these logos to you know almost to be something yeah go catch them i love that no, <laughs> and I that will that. that will prove everything you'll get noticed prove yourself on the water before you prove yourself off the water so yeah so you young guys out here watching or listening to this later i mean take heed of what this man's saying because that is so true and sometimes it's hard to tell a young kid no it is but but It'll make them better. And I give them, you know, I give them uh, some, you know, a jig or two here and there, yeah. you know, whatever, for the most part, major, a lot of times. Major sponsorship I say I throw them in the trash can or whatever, but if you take the time, if, if it's a well-written email, but I'll get some of them, the, you know, the college kids are the worst. They'll, I mean, they'll call up, I fish for so-and-so college, and da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, what you going to get, how you going to sell my product Yeah, to dealers? Yeah. You know, how you going to get me in more stores? Yeah. You know, that's the biggest thing. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. Sponsors all about advertising. Get followers is great advertising for sure. And uh, true life content, David Weaver says, can't get any better. And that's, but that's what you're saying is the reality of the industry right now. Yes. It's the days of giving a pro, uh, putting your stickers on the phone, <clears throat> it's moved to the social media and all that. And the kids that are hustling, can catch fish, like you said, but are hustling. They're the ones that are going to be more likely to get that. So take that advice. Catch the fish first. Yep. Learn how to fish first. Prove yourself on the water. The sponsors will come. There you go. So that's great. Uh, or just start a YouTube channel and 100,000 subscribers. That does help. But that like, yeah, that yeah, helps. But that, That's going to help. But, like, it's a lot easier in other aspects in the fishing. Because, like, even on YouTube now. It's hard to differentiate yourself between yeah, other people. There's so many YouTube. people doing it now. And everybody's listen, same with podcasting. You can go to Best Buy and buy all the mics in the world, and everybody's got a podcast. Yeah. You just got to keep hammering and hammering and perfect your craft. And then eventually, if you're good, it will come. If you're not, you're just another guy in his basement on a podcast. You know yep. what I'm saying? So, um, do y'all plan on making any soft plastics? And let's let's do this. Let's talk. Let, let's broaden that question a little bit. What is the future of greenfish tackle? So the future of green, I will I will not uh, probably ever make soft plastics because it's a pain in the ass that people don't realize. Well, that, but I also have um, I have a camaraderie with with guys like. Um, well, the guys at Zoom. The guys at Zoom. I mean, yeah, those guys have done more for me in, uh, when I say guys, I'm talking about Eddie Wortham, Chris Baxter, Jr. 
they have done more for me in this business as my friend and than anybody could ever imagine. That company is when you look at a company, mm-hmm. and I've I've had this conversation with a lot of people. When you look at companies um, that have come through the fishing industry that are big, there is nothing like it. And I don't want to. I don't mean like. Um, and we're talking about Zoom. I'm talking about Zoom. Nothing like Zoom. The way They're, the company is. The way that the company is run. The products that they they're. They're so revolutionary. If you think about it, from the time uh, Ed Sr. started it, you know, there was some plastic worms. I think the culprit worm was out. The cream worm was out. You think of a shape. If you can't do six degrees of separation back to Zoom Bait Company, I'll, I'll give you something. You know what? That's right. No, I never thought about that. It, I'll it give you something big. Yeah. Anything you think of. Um, I, I was at a show one time, and a guy came up to me, and and uh, they had made it was a it was a color or whatever. I don't remember what it was, and they were like, "Zoom copied me," and I was like, "Oh, really? Oh, well." I said, "Y'all make green pumpkin?" He's like, "Yeah." I said, "Well, you copied Zoom. You copied Zoom." Yeah, and people forget because it's you know it was so long ago. Like I mean, they started green pumpkin. One hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Green pumpkin is a Zoom color. I mean, you think of any shape bait, you know, other than the cinco. Cinco is kind of an original, right? An original bait. Um. Trick worm, super fluke, uh, speed got crawl, a fluke style bait now, and all that. Yeah, horny toad. Yep. The 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 I guess the word is revolutionary, or or I mean the things that they've come up with in this industry. Yeah, are Ed Senior is he's probably the I idolize that man like. And I've told Wortham and them this before. I'm like, that you have no idea. You're almost getting emotional talking. Yeah, about yes. It. I mean and I like that. Yeah. I, like, see, yeah. I, I, I do get emotional with it. Like because I can't like express the gratitude that I've had towards those people. And like I've only met Ed Senior. I only ever met him twice in my life. Yeah. And I've been to Zoom a, a bunch of times. But I make balsa baits too. Um, we didn't show any of those, oh, well, well. but so I've like idolized him because of his, just his thinking and his forethought. And, right. you know, it's, um, you about got me teared up. You did, so man, I'm, I'm, like, I'm I, I, I just, I'm over to to <laughs> I mean, you know, to, to, to go like, I, this, this bait business to me is a passion. Yeah. You I, know, I can tell. Um, I've it, it's how I'm, I've made my living. What little bit of living that I'm making? I mean, I'm I'm working myself to death. But but you're it, not in China making nice. It's it's a it's a made out of a it's a labor of love. But anyways, getting back to that, the the guys at Zoom have done more for me in my business, and more than they you you talk to them like well, we ain't done nothing for him, but it just like. Being incorporated with them and and no you know knowing them it it has done so much yeah for, and there's no way brand. you're gonna make a soft plastic because of that no that relationship that relationship I respect that if 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 Zoom is no longer or whatever maybe you yeah. know but it's like it's like a chatterbait I know Ron Davis real well and people are like. Why, oh, and 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 the guys at Z Man, they're like, well, when are you gonna make a, a bladed jig or a chatterbait? I'm like, I can't make one better. So mm-hmm. I, I don't like to come out with things that I don't think are better. I can't make a chatterbait better. I don't think I could make a soft plastic worm that's better 
than what Zoom makes. Okay, fair enough. That's so cool. why compete with them? Yeah, if you don't think you can make it better. I agree. What about buzz baits? I just that was a question. Yeah, we we've got several uh, questions on buzz baits. Uh, toad toter and do you make buzz baits? So if you yeah, so uh, somebody want to know about the toad toter? Yeah, the toad toter is uh, it was something that Brandon Cobb had been making out of a do it mold for a long time. He took a drop shot mold and he uh, uh, dribbled it down and went and put a wire in it and was making a hook. He was making them himself. That's what he was throwing. And uh, he said, I want to make this, this frog buzz bait. I said, Oh, that's a no brainer. So mm -hmm. we made it and, and we made, <clears throat> we, we actually made the first one. And we had to put the uh, we put a little keeper on the bottom of it, and I was like, "Well, Brent, Brendan's like, I don't want the keeper." And I was like, "But, dude, if we don't have the keeper, we're going to get a lot of guys calling in saying, who the heck doesn't have a keeper? Most frog slides off of it." Well, what the keeper did was, and Brandon was right, it tore the frog. Yeah. So, um, you had to kind of turn it to its side and push the frog up on there without tearing the plastic real bad so that was the first model now the, the the new one is just a piece of lead that you just slide the frog over you put your little drop of glue on there i can use the same horny toad on my toad toter pretty much all day long right with a little drop of glue i got you now uh, is, is that all the uh is that all the other do you make any other buzz baits yeah we make um we make a double buzz bait that we call the shark we make it with floats and without floats um uh, a company, I don't know if they still make them. Accent used to make this one called the Buzz B2. I got some. They okay. Do, they still make them. Hopefully. They do? Okay. Well, I know they quit making them for a time or yeah. they were hard to get because we have a guy locally that that's all he would throw was the the buzz bait with the floats, the buzz yes. bait with the floats. And he, he'd come and he's like, man, you got to make me this with the floats. And he's kind of a buddy of mine. And, and I give him a hard time. I'm like, man, you don't need those floats. Da, da, da. Yeah. He's like, you got to have these floats. So I was like, okay. So I ordered some little floats and I put them on the, on the, the shark buzz bait and I went out and I fished with it. And I was like, man, this thing is a little bit easier to, to get to, started quicker, to real you know, slower. Yeah. 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 You know, you just want that bait just to, it don't float, but it makes it where you can reel it super, super slow. Keeps gotcha. it up in the water column. So <clears throat> yep. You. Keeps it up. And then we make one, um, that was the hammerhead. And, uh, so, uh, a distributor, came to me booger man was basically probably not the original I'm, crocagator might have been the original mm -hmm. um but booger man was the one that was so popular everybody was loved the booger yeah. man buzz bait you know it just sit there i'm making you do a lot of talking so a distributor came to me and said um we have a we have a lot of space for uh leftover from our booger man buzz bait that Boogerman went out of business. I right. think the the old the uh, older guy that was making them, he passed away, and then his wife took it over or something. Anyways, they went out of business. So I had no intentions of making one when it was you know when Boogerman was in because I was like it, a Boogerman is it, that was it that was their that was their niche that was basically all they made. They made a really good one, and he said, "Can you make this?" I said, "Yeah, I can make it." I said, "But you know." I don't want it to come out and be exactly like the booger. I don't want to take theirs, put put it in a mold. Re, would, would have been super sim, simple to do. So, right. what we did was kill the bottom of ours and make a a flat spot on it, um, <clears throat> just so it would hit a little bit differently. Um, still makes the same noise, but but we made we made that. I've actually made one. Um, that I made prior to this where I take a Colorado blade and slide it down the wire and uh, uh, weld it or what are they? Uh, like tack it somehow? Or? Yeah, what's the stuff? Solder it. I solder it to the head and the blade hits that Colorado buzz bait. Unbelievable sound. Problem is 
I can't mass produce it. Yeah. You know, it's because if it if I had to take that Colorado blade, you got to bend it, you got to run it down the the, the head, you got to take a solder gun, solder it on there. I can't figure out how to get the Colorado blade in a mold to make it do, but it makes, a, we call it the symbol because it hits and it makes a God awful racket, which is what you want, which is what you want. Yeah. But I, you know, I can't mass produce it. So I'm not going to, you know, what's the point in making it? I already can't keep up with, with what we got going <laughs> right, now. Yeah, yeah. So I get, um, it. I get it. Well, I, t I tell you what, we're all, we're already about two hours in getting up there. And I know you got these young men behind you that you got to get in bed and everything. So I want to say, first of all, thank you for the suggestion. Absolutely. You said he'd be a good guest. Oh, you were not, you I were not wrong. Uh, yeah. Your boy Roper said you got to get him on. Like <laughs> and so again, I, again, for those that want to know, we had, we had about a five minute conversation on the phone last night, but really the first time I ever met you was when you walked in tonight. And I want to say, First of all, you did a fantastic job, and I appreciate well, your you. honesty. And I like it when my guests get a little emotion. I like oh. it. No, <laughs> seriously, I like it because it shows it shows passion, and it yeah. shows you know you care about other people other than yourselves. And, yeah, and I think that's admirable. I respect I respect those guys mm -hmm. more more than they know. Yeah, well, that's that's great. Now again. We did not cover all his baits, all right? So there's only so much you can do, and then we get going down rabbit holes and stuff like that. But you guys need to go to greenfishtackle.com and check it out because I we, actually I did that. We got to do one more. You want to? You got time? I mean, I can stay all night. Yeah, we we, we got to do one more. Shit, I, it's been sitting in front of me. Yeah, okay, so here we go. Do this. This is, this is our first attempt at a hard bait. Um. They are coming. They'll be here within about 20 days or so. Uh, but we have made a bait that is like a uh, wander style bait. I yep. call it a slash bait. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a lipless jerk bait that you can use with forward facing sonar. It, uh, we have two different sizes. We have an 85 millimeter that is a half ounce. We have a 100 millimeter that is a three quarter ounce. And um, it is the Tim, dot the dot minnow dot minnow. Tim, can you give me one more zoom for the night? <clears throat> and I'm glad you did that. I get going and I. So the dot fire. the dot is um, you know everybody says that they're they're throwing it dots. You know I'm throwing it dots throwing it dots. Well dot minnow it stands for D O T stands for dead on target. So you can throw it. It sinks. It's got that that shimmy sink, right. you know, um, it where it it just wiggles as it sinks down. Then you can jerk it. You can see it. It gives a good return. Um, we're gonna do it in six colors. We have uh, what we call is uh, flash herring, ghost minnow, uh, pearl chartreuse, pearl chartreuse back, chrome, and Crystal blue. Crystal blue. <clears throat> What's the sink rate on it? Or does it float or suspend? Oh, uh, it sinks. It no, sinks. It, it sinks. It's and it's it's a it's a pretty fast sinker. Um but it's made to get down there. It's made to get down to those fish. You know, you but you can fish it as fast as you want and keep it up in the column, you know, and keep it above the fish's head so they chase it. I've caught a bunch of fish on it. If you look at this one, it's got it's got teeth marks on oh, it. Yeah. This fall, I caught a bunch. I only had a few samples. Um, New took a bunch of them. Other guys have taken a bunch of them. There's no lip on it, Dave. Um, he said he wanted to see the lip up close. There is no lip. There's no lip. It is a is a. We'll lipless, send you a picture. Dan. It's a lipless a jerk, bait. jerk bait, too. huh? That's a smaller size jerk bait. Yeah, it is. That's a that's pretty a hundred. Bait. That's a hundred millimeter. Hundred millimeter at three quarters of an ounce. At three quarters you of an ounce. Smaller than that. We have an eighty-five. That's a half ounce. It's one of the. And What's the link on? The 85 is 85 millimeters. 85 millimeters. So this is what you say was 100? That's 100 millimeters. So it would probably be about less, yay. Less than half an inch? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'd say. I yeah. don't know about millimeters. I can't convert millimeters, I mean, millimeters to inches, but, I can't either, that's why you know, the but smart people length. use millimeters. Uh, <laughs> uh, got that a couple. Good. What's the price point going to be on this? Couple. Uh, they're they're going to retail at twelve ninety nine, which wow. is, a, in today's world, is an excellent price. Point. That's a good looking bait. 
And yeah, see, that's a, I wish guys we had the ability to show you holding it in person and actually feeling it too. I can feel you. I can feel the weight on it so it's, much. It's that. got some weight. It's got some weight, and I'm glad you called and, me. And that. a lot of you know, it's not only I've been throwing a Lucky Craft Wander like that on heronfish in the dirt for years. Mm -hmm. I've never told anybody about it because it's Ooh, just juice. No, yeah. it, it's it's really good. Like because yeah. you can sit back way off of them and throw it a long long ways and that's that's key when those fish are in the dirt like that you know like a foot to to less than a foot of water yeah and you just jerk it and you get hung up on sometimes but we've got a question on it what is that any issues with spinning uh we're reeling it in pretty that's fast a good question. with it spinning it you yeah you can't I mean if you just reel it like burn it in like that it's not meant to be done like that it it's meant to be more like slashed slash like bait. you know I, that's what I call it a slash bait now you can reel it and if you just reel it slow I've caught some fish doing that it just kind of wanders like a wander like that's a what wander. a wander does you right. know um, it is basically that it, it's it's our version of a wander but it's a little bit we. Changed the shape of it, made it look more fishy. You know, Wonder is, is it's a great bait. I've, I've used it forever. Um, but it was just kind of like a little stick. Yeah, you know. Sure. And these, you said, are going to be available in about 20, 21 days, somewhere in there. So, yes, they will be up on our site as soon as we get them. And then they'll be going out to retailers within probably by the middle to end of April. We might have to talk to you about that. So that 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 is pretty good. But like I was telling, I, I appreciate you. I get so caught up in this stuff that I forget things. So I'm glad you brought that up because I, I know that's well. That was the big. That was one that I wanted to to you do. Slapped, like you should have like the, me. the little uh, the little skirted bad little shad was that's in such an infant stage right now. I yeah. mean, you know, we, we make stuff like this all the time. Like we have so many things that we make and then we take out and play with. So I got those two guys, Tanner and Caleb, they're, um, they're like my little scope teachers. So right. I, I showed them that and Tanner immediately went to the lake and he called me the day after he was like, dude, this thing is so good. He's like, I caught a, I, he said, I caught like two threes and a four on it. And I was like, oh, really? well, what'd you do? Did you just drop it? He said, no, dude, I fished it on the bottom. He's like, it, you know, you, when you drop it to him, I don't know what it is about a skirt, but that is basically just mixing the best of both worlds on the Domeki rig and a jig. So you got it. You throw it on a spinning rod real easy. But, you, you know, you, a lot of people don't fish – a shad body on a jig because we think we're imitating crawfish. But I mean, we, they eat a jig as a bluegill oh, probably yeah. just as many times as they do a right. crawfish, you mm -hmm. know? So for you, for you old guys there, he did the math. 85 millimeters equals three inch, hundred millimeters equals four inch. That's what he said. Now I, I'm not, that's, that's, that's E week two K. I know, I know more about three inches than I do four inches. Story of my life, buddy. <laughs> trust me. So does my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Kevin. We know what you're And the packing. eyes have it. We all agree. <laughs> we, yeah, we know what you're packing. But, yeah, for the rest of us, for the rest of us, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm packing a jig. He's packing a jig. I got the little one. Uh, you're going to have to go back through the comment section and get these boys to come back with all these uh, – Name suggestions and all that. My yeah, I'm a, I, is, how do I go back through these? You can. It's going to be second. We're done. You go back on YouTube. They send them to his website. Yeah, can they do that? Uh, um, we don't want to inundate his website with a bunch of idiots. The, yeah, and emails. Not that you that guys would, are idiots. That's yeah, not what I mean. Yeah, no. That would just clog our, my our audience knows who they are. That would yeah, just clog my who up. They are. You can do it. Tyler's through. not on tonight. Tyler Minix. We haven't seen him tonight. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that boy right there oh. would give you five. Oh, just trust me. You would know if Tyler was here like that. Well, but but you can go on YouTube back once it yeah, one, okay. second we're done, and he can just go through the comments, and they'll all be there. So maybe maybe you have a winner in there because I know there's some pretty good ones. They were throwing it out as fast as as Tim back there could try to get questions and also uh, maybe just a little bit insane. But that's why I like you guys. I always say it's not me. It's the crowd I hang around with. So <laughs> it's never my fault. It's everybody else. But, again, I, I, I appreciate you, you 
catching that. Yep. I, 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 but again, well, I, I told you I didn't want to come on here and it be an infomercial. You know, so that, that's something I want to. <laughs> but say I do. Too. I did want to take the opportunity to show it yes. and and. But that's one thing you said when we were talking on the phone. Like I don't want to do a, an infomercial, and we yeah. have it. Right, we have it. But uh, thank you for for catching me on that. But guys, again, if you go to greenfishtackle.com, check out. Like I looked at it. That, that's just a lot. Okay, it's way too oh, much for me to describe. This it. guy said can't find the custom baits pro. So what you have to do is go under the 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 bait drop tab tab uh, tab on the thing, not the um not the BLT bait drop because that's the one we did through Best on Tour with the custom painted Spro rock crawlers. But if you go th to the bait drop tab, click that and you'll see all the custom painted baits that we that we have available right now. Yeah. So you guys, listen, go buy some stuff. Make it worth his time for driving all the way up here and hanging out with us, Yahoo. So hopefully we can get you some sales out of all this. And I guarantee you here, second that hits your site, that's going to go. Oh, this thing is going to be. The Lanier it, guys and Alatuna guys and all these clear water reservoirs up here, they're going to eat that up. I'm super, super. I'm, and I've never done a hard bait like this. I've never done something outsourced. Right. We've always made it, but you know I can't make this. Mm -hmm. I don't have the machines. I don't have the capabilities. Right. Um, I have custom painted a lot of them, but you know I custom painted some and sent them. We we got the colors that we liked, and this is just something that was there was a niche, and I had this going on before um, the finisher came out. And when they come out with that, I was like, oh man, I thought I, I thought I was gonna have the 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 market on this because wonders are so hard to get. I think yeah. you can only get them in Japan right now. Yeah. Um, so that's why I did this because a lot of guys were fishing with wonders and they're like, how do you get the wonders? Blah, blah, blah. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, well, I, but I tell you what, and, and, and I've held a lot of baits in my hands. You can tell the difference between junk. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And I've had my hands on this bait. I, I sourced. You, if he done. leaves that bait here tonight, me, Kevin and Danny going to have a scrap in here trying to see who gets <laughs> I, it. I sourced first. I promise. I sourced you, several different bait. factories. And that's the thing about getting a quality bait from China and not quality bait from China. Yeah. The factory that you get it from. It's so funny that you say that. Cause I know some guys that get their rods from China but I was told that in China, and this is just hearsay, this is just Danny repeating what he's heard, is that some of these rod factories are three or four levels high. The bottom level puts out your junk, and the higher the level, it all comes from the same factory, but the higher the level in, within some of these factories, that's where you know, they make the quality stuff too. Yeah. And not everything is what you can get on, you know, some of these websites where you can buy blanks. So that's not something you're going right. to go buy a blank. Now, I've held it in my hand. I can tell you it's it's a quality Yeah, it's, and it's a, it's a quality paint job, it is. quality clear coat, quality 3D eyes, comes with Mustad Ultra Point hooks right out of the package. Don't have to change the hooks. It looks good and it um, feels good. I, it looks really good. Yeah, I mean, there's a there, good looking bait. It is a good looking bait. I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't say it. Th this is one of those baits. I like to tell people that we build baits. We don't sell them. We sell this one. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I, 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 That's accurate right there. Hey, JP Vern, he's held a lot of three inch in his hands. You're just, you're being you're being kind <laughs> with that. Three, three inches on a good day with the wind not blowing. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, I would like to know if the greenfish hats fit big noggins. Um, I, most of the hats that we have are Richardson 112s. Um, oh, they'll be fine. They'll then. fit. So, yeah, yeah Richardson's fit. top notch. It is. Actually, we got some new hats coming for these rope guy, these little young kids with the rope, the rope hats. You know, I it, it, isn't, it, isn't it funny how the old guys started the rope tradition? Yes, and we we call them old man hats, and now the young kids want the rope hats. I will tell you this: that I've, I've just placed an order for hats, and I went back because last time I made an order, the Richardsons were out of stock, couldn't get them, and so all mine I went back to Richardsons, but they have a section. Well, you can order those rope hats, and I'm telling you right now that this guy has it under old man hats. That's exactly 100% <laughs> what it is called. It's called old man hats, and I don't, I don't like them. I don't either. I, I'm not. No. I'm not a fan. I like the the I like the one twelve classic trucker style hats. Yes, yeah, and then I like kind of like an unstructured hat, you know. Yeah. But anyway, but again, guys, go to greenfishtackle.com, make you some orders, and check out everything. Everything I've held today is. is Fantastic. Look, and these custom painted baits right here, I'm serious. I'm going to fight the man for them. They're awesome. 
These jigs are nice too. They are. Ready. Everything, yeah. So everything's good. I'm about to talk to you about getting some of this stuff in the stores now. Yeah. yeah we're about to we, do we that, can hook so. you up. Um, again, I, first of all, John, seriously, thank you for coming up here. I know it was a long ass drive for you guys. I know you're staying up here and you're gonna be fishing with these boys. So, number one, especially for you boys, not be safe on the water this weekend. Weather's gonna be nasty. I think we're gonna get wet tomorrow. You're gonna get wet tomorrow, pre-fishing and all that, but for all of you guys, if you're going to be on the water this weekend, definitely stay safe. But I, I appreciate the fact that you were able to go down some of the questioning that I had that I didn't plan, and you answered it honestly. And, and I, I all the respect in the world for you on that. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Next Tuesday night on the Tuesday Nighter, we're going to have a crappy episode with Kyle Reeves of ATX Lure Company. His buddy Justin are coming in. We're going to talk all crappy. I know a lot of you guys have been bugging me. Got to have a crappy episode. That is next Tuesday night. Next Thursday night, Ryan Hanks and the guys from Cast will be coming up here. Yeah, that's the 28th, right? Next, yeah, 28th. So that's next Thursday. So Ryan and the guys. But also at some point next week, I got to figure it out. Alan Brooks with the Touring Anglers Association and that no forward facing sonar terminal on there. He's going to be in here and we're actually going to draw the names out of the hat one by one to let you finally know who is coming to fish this tournament on Lake Lanier. So that's going to happen at Fish North Georgia Live. And, uh, again, you guys are always awesome. So, Tim, Kevin, appreciate you guys as well. Appreciate you guys hanging out back here. Man, I appreciate you. That, yep. that, that was that was actually – I enjoyed it. That was an Thanks for the opportunity. Episode. No, thank you always. So, buy local and buy American. Amen to that. Amen. You guys have a great weekend. Stay safe on the water. We'll see you next week.